<laughs> we, we know this. Okay, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, so before we kick off tonight, if we can just have a quick attendance. Okay, doke. Um, Michael Aronson. Here. Robert Bowker. Here. Eric Talbot. Here. Phil Maria. Yeah. Uh, Brenda Burbeck. Here. Angelica Kaganis. Yes. And uh, Chair Roy. Here. All right. And, uh, and so Angelica will be uh, a voting member today because I believe we have one uh, full member. Actually, we have two, two alternates. I, I mean, we have two alternates present. So actually, Brenda will be able to vote. I think we have the rest of the board is no, we're missing two, two full members. Yeah. Okay, Thank so you. both Angelica, both, sorry, <laughs> trying to get off on the right foot here, but yeah, so both Brenda and Angelica will be eligible to vote because we have two um, members who are absent. All right, um, so with that, uh, I think the first item on the agenda is just approval of the January uh, minutes. Um, and just as a reminder, um, I think Bobby and Brenda were both absent from that meeting. So of the uh, folks who were here last Meeting. Um, could I have a motion to approve the minutes? Michael Aronson, motion to approve the minutes. Angelica, second. All right. And can I have, uh, we'll do a roll call. Okay. Um, Michael Aronson. Aye. Eric Talbot. Aye. Phil Morea. Aye. Angelica Kaganis. Aye. And Chair Roy. Aye. Very good. So let's get that away. Um, all right. So we're going to jump right into it. Hopefully you can hear me um, online. Um, so starting uh, with new business tonight, we're starting with the BAR01 2024. This is 37 uh, Callum Avenue. And um, if we can have the applicant come up and then uh, Maddie will put the application drawings up online. Um, and so and I'll just note, so, so the, the, the visuals are, are helpful. Um, is provided, they're the, the visuals that were provided, that were submitted um, online with your application. And we'll try to put everything up on the screen as well so that everybody watching from home uh, can, can take. Okay. Uh, was this on? Can you hear me? Uh, it was on. It was on. Okay. Yeah, is the green light lit? Yes. Okay. And we're not going to hear anything here. These, these microphones are really just to. Okay. Um, to get online. All right, well, uh, good evening, Chair and members of the board. My name is uh, Stephen Helms. I'm with the Helms Group Architects in Katona, representing George and his wife, Jay uh, Goodwin, who live at 37 Callum Avenue. They've been living at this home for about 36 years. And uh, the project before you tonight is an ex uh, existing detached accessory structure. It's a one car garage. It's been there since 1925, and it uh, needs to be repaired, replaced. So we went in and uh, came in with drawings to repair the garage. And basically, we take it down and rebuild it. And uh, uh, about a month ago, we were before the zoning board, we were successful in getting our variances. It's closer to the setback than it, what's required by code, but we got our variances. And um, it's quite simple. The roof material is going to match the existing house. The shingles are going to match the existing house. Uh, with respect to color, texture, scale, and so forth. Um, we have a carriage house uh, overhead garage door facing the street. It is a corner lot. Uh, we do comply with our height. It's under 15 feet. There's no windows on the uh, one elevation there. I think it's the north elevation. I'm not sure. Uh, don't have my glasses on. But yeah, that one. By code, we cannot have a window on that. It becomes less than five feet to the property line. Uh, in the back, we're also not having any windows. And uh, we did get support letters from both our uh, contiguous neighbors on this application. And they would like to see the improvements. And we're here before your board, uh, hopefully uh, getting your approval so we can file a permit and, and have the building, have the garage rebuilt. Um, Jay, uh, George, you have anything to add? All right. So that, that photo, yeah, we can look at the photograph of the existing structure. I think that's. I have a photograph here if, if you want to pass around to loop. I don't sure. know if you sure. might give you some context of is what's it, there. It's going to be in the same existing footprint. Yeah, it's actually it's a, it's a, a couple of feet wider. The reason being it's an eight foot wide door. We want to go with a nine foot wide door so they don't have to put the mirrors in. And but we're going to hold the left and the back side. Okay. And the variance for the side. We got the variance. That's correct. And uh, we're utilizing the existing curb cut and. Uh, uh, just give a little more depth. Single master house, the, the roof shingles, the box out rakes, the exposed raptor tails. Are you going to put any leaders or gutters on there? Uh, I think we showed gutters on it, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we 
Uh, that's something I don't know if it's required by code there, the, the garage. Um, uh, George, have you have any? Not a problem with we need to put stuff into it. No, it's just, it just makes sense because you're going to get runoff right there. It makes sense to get it away. You don't have a lot of shack gardens. Yep. So it's not an issue. Okay. So if you use gutters, it would just match the white trim color yeah, that you have. Exactly. Okay. Five-inch case style gutters, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Other other board questions on the application? Are you going to pour a new slab of concrete down? Or are you going to do it? Yeah, we're putting in the foundation, okay. yeah. No, I, I, I think this is a great project. I'm familiar with it. I walk by it frequently. Yeah, I think it would be a nice <laughs> asset to the community. Um, can I have a motion to uh, open a public hearing on the application? Oh, my way. Motion to open the public hearing. No, I second. Any objections? No objections. Motion carries. Is there anybody here in the room? I know there's a lot of people in the room uh, to speak to this application. So you can come up. I don't see anybody moving. Is there anybody online? You can use the hand raise function on Zoom if you would like to speak to this application. And I do not see any hands. Um, and I know that the, uh, that so, all right. I, with that, I have a motion from the board to close the public hearing. Bob and Bauer can make a motion to close the public hearing. Michael Aronson, second. Any objections? No objections. The motion carries. Um, any last minute questions or comments from the board on the application? Um, st staff, is there any any questions that we haven't asked? No. Okay. Um, can I have a motion from the board to approve the application? Well, I have a motion to approve the application. I'll be back for a second that motion. And a roll call, please. Okay. Eric Talbot. Aye. Robert Bowker. Aye. Michael Aronson. Aye. Brenda Burback. Aye. Angelica Kaganis. Aye. Phil Morea. Aye. And Chair Roy. Aye. Very good. Great. Motion carried. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. All right. Um, next on the agenda, we have 45 Mechanical Road. Um, this is, I believe, this is a AR 3.4. Um, so saying we'll get the drawings up and then you can introduce yourself and uh, let us uh, kind of describe your project to us. Okay, um, okay so my name is Zena Anstead Castro, the owner of the house. Um, I'm here to speak on behalf of the project. We're looking to add, we moved in about two years ago, Cape style house, about 1300 square feet, looking to add a dining room of roughly 180 square feet and then a deck off the dining room of roughly 160 square feet. Um, we don't have a dining right now, family of three, just looking to expand a little bit more in space. Um, everything will match. The siding will be like a silver gray vinyl, trim will be vinyl, gutters will be the white aluminum, shingles will match what is for the roofing already. Um, and then the deck will be like Trex compost material. That's what you call it. <laughs> okay. We'll go to just look at the photos really quickly. Um, yeah. So all of the finishes, as you, as you described, and I think it's it's labeled clearly in the drawings, will match the finishes that we're looking at here. Yes. Okay. Um, they have the materials separately. Yeah. Yeah. These are more photos. Okay. I did add a list of materials onto the most recent plan with the elevations. It's in the center. There you go, the finished schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, board members' questions? I just, could you orient us a little bit on the drawings as to where the, the build out will be? Of course, of course, if you could scroll up a tiny bit. Um, so the top picture is the, the back of the house. Uh, no, yeah, the back of the house, exactly. It's like kind of like the side of the house, I should say. So you're looking at the front door, and then you're looking at what is now our living room and like slash dining area. And then the addition is that last piece with the bay window and then the deck, that's that picture. And then the other picture right next to it is from the the other side of the house. So it's just, it's kind of like you're looking past the existing house into just like Got just it. one window of this engine, I guess. Yep. The bottom one is the back of the house. And then the right bottom is the front of the house and you could see the bay window and the entrance to the deck right there the dining goes from front to back it goes it's like um when you're looking at the house you won't actually see the addition 
it's just solely going to be in the back of the house off of our, like, we have a back door that comes out of our kitchen right now, just goes out into our lawn. So it would just go, like, we don't even touch the existing house at all. It's just, we're taking the door off the hinges and then it's the new building right there. So just if that bay window is... This is like the side there. of the house right now. You look out that bay window from the dining room. The new dining room. The new dining room, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. So that's the side and of And the, the window in the back on the right. Is that also the dining room on the other side of that window? Yes, yeah, so it will have one small window on the opposite side of the room. Yes. And, and then the slider to the deck. deck. Yeah. Okay. Can we see the finishes that are going on there? Just to get a just to make sure it matches. It's going to be what is it, vinyl siding? Yeah, we have vinyl siding, like a silver gray, like okay. the color of the house right now, and then the white accents yeah. of the trim and things like that. Is is there an adjacent property in the rear? Or I'm not sure. I can... There is a property. If you go to the survey line, you might be able to see the houses that surround us. Um, so that's our house. We have a house to our right and left, and then it it's a pretty longer piece yeah. of land and then we butt up with um like someone else's backyard like not a house it's just their like a slope of their backyard yeah. very good it um, require any variance. that was gonna be the next question <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you yeah and we did have wetland approval i guess for it as well i'm not sure what, what was the wetlands component? And they just had us file the application and then wetlands looked into it to say nothing yeah. is needed. Okay. So it's at, at, at staff level. Oh, at, yeah. at, wow. Okay, perfect. Um, very good. Um, can I have a motion to open a public hearing? Michael Aaron's a motion to open a public hearing. And Joel Yannis second. Any objections? No objections are in a public hearing. Is there anybody in this room to speak to this application tonight? Do not see anybody. Is there anybody on Zoom? You can use the hand raise function on Zoom if you'd like to speak. And I do not see anybody. Um, okay, so can I have a motion to close the public hearing? I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing. We'll a second. Any objections? No objections. The motion carries. Um, again, staff, any last questions that we've not? Okay. No, that thing covered all the questions I had. Good. Um, all right, so can we have a motion uh, to approve the application? Well, yeah. Ray, a motion to approve the application. I second it. And a roll call. Okay. And that was Eric Talbot on the second. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Eric Talbot? Aye. Robert Bowker? Aye. Michael Aronson? Aye. Joel Maria? Aye. Angelica Kaganis? Aye. Brenda Burbach? Aye. Chair Roy? Aye. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, Next on the agenda, uh, item C, uh, BAR 04, 2024, and this is 11 Ward Place, and this is a uh, legalization of an enclosure of an open porch. Good evening, uh, Chairperson and members of the board. My name is Nora Hildinger. I am with Building Permit Services, and I am here representing Manuel Karmahaka, for this project, and um, what this is, this up. Um, for my narrative. Um, so this project consists of an existing addition to a single family home located at 11 Ward Place. Um, the addition is a den sunroom with a masonry crawl space. Um, the den slash sunroom is approximately two, uh, 268 square feet. The space has four windows, one door to the living room, and one exterior door to the backyard. In or around 1980, construction on the existing covered porch turned that porch into habitable space, the den or sunroom. So this um, den slash sunroom has existed um, as this since 1980. 
um, as shown in the pictures. Um, the exterior of the addition is covered in the same gray siding as the rest of the house. The crawl space is masonry, the same as the rest of the house. The window facing Park Street, um, as you can see, has the same blue shutters as the front of the house. The windows at the back of the house of the den slash sunroom are the same as the windows from the kitchen. The door to the backyard, um, the door, uh, it's an egress door, a secondary egress door, um, goes to masonry steps to the backyard. Um, once again, the space is 268 square feet. The space has studs and street rock per the as-built plans, which uh, were submitted, and the roof is constructed as per the as-built plans. That's it. Questions? Out of curiosity, I understand you represent Mr. Um, Hamarka, but I also saw a De, De Chikio. Yes, uh, that, the previous that were the previous so owners. kind of helping to make this. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, uh, Manuel Kanahaka brought the house from them as this, and a bunch of things are, <laughs> Got it. yeah, are being legalized in the house. That's why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but he is now the present owner. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Thank you. Can we go back to the photos real quick? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just it's just that volume. It's yeah, the, the volume that we're looking at on the right side of this photo. Yes. I was, I was just trying to read what was the material was on the pediment there, but just so we make sure that's defined. Is that a vertical siding? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, on the top. Yeah. Going to the roof. Yeah. Okay. I just have a procedural question because I'm sort of curious if this has been in existence since 1980, what precipitated the move to uh, legalize it? Um, the sale, the sale of, yeah, it okay. came up that it had never been permitted. <laughs> so it was, since it was never permitted, is everything code compliant as far as electric frame and insulation? Well, that's checked out and code compliant now. Well, once they, they, once they, yeah. uh, the building department get, uh, grants a build, issues a building permit, yep. then um, before they can get a CO for it, they would need to get electrical certification. Okay, so that's when that will... Yeah, and there'll be a final inspection on the property as well. Got it. Our building inspector, Joe Gustinelli, is on the call in case anyone has any questions specific to, to this as well. I'll turn his camera off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's pretty much the way it was just explained. Um, once uh, this, this gets approved, then um, once the resolution is uh, signed and approved, then a permit will be issued and all the necessary inspections will occur before we close it out with a certificate. Sure. Thanks, Joe. All right. Other questions? Board members? No? I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, okay. So, can I have a motion to open a public hearing? Joe, again, it's a motion to open a public hearing. I'll raise a second. I heard both. <laughs> <laughs> um, any objections? No objections. Motion carries. Is there anybody here uh, in the room to speak to this application? And I do not see anybody. Is there anybody on Zoom? You can use the hand raise function if you would like to speak to this application. And I do not see anybody. Um, okay, so can I have a motion to close the public hearing? Michael Aaron's a motion to close the public hearing. Any objections? No objections. The motion carries. Um, again, just uh, any other questions that we should have asked? You know, Valerie, Linda. No. Um, can we have a motion to approve the application? Eric Talvin, I make the motion to approve the application. Bill Murray, a second. And a roll call. Okay, Michael Aronson. Aye. Robert Balker. Aye. Eric Talbot. Aye. Bill Murray. Aye. Angelica Caganis. Aye. Brenda Burback. Aye. Chair Roy. Aye. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, all right, uh, so we have another BAR. Uh, we're up to item D on the agenda. This is VAR 07 2024. Um, this is for 28 Donald Lane, and uh, this is a BAR approval to legalize a garage and breezeway addition. Um, so we will, uh, is the applicant here or is the applicant online? 
Oh. <laughs> you didn't need to go sit down. <laughs> yeah. I had to get the other people word. Once again, for the record, hello, uh, my name is Maura Hildener. I'm with Building Permanent Services, and I'm here representing um, Barry Sittler on a project. I told you the blender. I was so confused. Oh, here it is. Okay. No, wait, I got it. Uh, but represent very similar on um, 28 Donald Lane for a garage. Um, this project consists of a 336 square foot garage and an additional 46 foot breezeway. Uh, which attached the garage to the house. The present owner, Barry Sittler, purchased the home in 1993, 30 years ago, and the garage was there as it is now. It never, it didn't come up when he bought the home, and now he's selling the home, and it, it definitely came up. Um, so I want to just describe the garage. Uh, the garage is attached to the house by a small breezeway. The garage is covered in blue vinyl siding, the same as the house. It has a white garage door. Um, that matches the white front door. The back of the garage is covered by large hemlocks. The roof and the walls are constructed as shown on the as-built plans. Mm. And we did go for variance and were granted a variance on this, just as an aside. It was a five, it was like a three-foot, or I can't remember, a three-foot or a five-foot side yard variance, which the zoning board did grant. Okay. I think this, so one of the photos of this tree, that was just the back where we could kind of try to make it. There you go. Yes, that's the back. Got it. Same siding, just obscured by the trees. Um, and same procedure as last one. Those are going to check it out. Once yes. <laughs> yes, it has electric in it, so we're going to have to get an electrical certification. Okay. Okay. Questions? Looks straightforward. Okay. Um, we have a motion to open a public hearing. Angelica, can you have a motion to open a public hearing? I have a motion to open Any objections? No objections. The motion carries. Is there anybody in this room to speak to this application? I do not see anybody in the room. If there is anybody on Zoom, you can use the hand raise function if you'd like to speak to this application. And I do not see anybody. Um, can I have a motion to close the public hearing? Or it's how about make a motion to close the public hearing? Michael and second. And um, any objections? No objections. The motion carries. Um, again, Linda Valerie, anything that we didn't ask? Yeah. All right. Um, can I have a motion to approve the application? I'll be back for making a motion to approve the VAR. Michael and second. And a roll call. Michael Aronson. Aye. Robert Bowker. Aye. Eric Talbot. Aye. Phil Maria. Aye. Angelica Kaganis. Aye. Brenda Burback. Aye. Chair Roy. Aye. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, all right. So we're still on new business. The next item on the agenda is uh, letter E, um, Planning Board 01-2024, BAR 05-2024. Um, and this is so 325 North Island. This is a site plan, um, site plan and BAR, uh, and a conditional use for intensive, intensive and will use as a veterinary hospital. Um, so as we're bringing everything up, um, that is there anything that we want to highlight up front or should we, would you rather I can let the applicant go over the, um, yeah, proposal? this particular one, I mean, just to, just to highlight, um, the, this is a recent, uh, zoning, uh, board amendment or excuse me, a zoning amendment that, um, the village board passed a few months past, uh, upon request, it was originally upon request of the applicant. And it did have a public hearing uh, for the zoning amendments, and now they're back before the this board for segment. Okay. Uh, very good. So you can go over, walk us through the project, and then we'll um, then we'll kind of discuss. Sure. So good evening. Uh, for the record, Corey Salama from Zarin and Stein. It's here today on behalf of the applicant. Uh, here with me are Luda Macy, our project architect, and Jacqueline Cohn, uh, my colleague from Zarin and Steinmetz. So the property is located at 325 North Highland Avenue, approximately 2.8 acres located in the OR zoning district, currently improved with uh, an existing 8,000 square foot structure. I think everyone locally knows it as the Art Barn property, Hoy Textiles in there as well. Um, 
And the applicant is simply proposing to move their uh, successful veterinary practice from 320 North Highland, which is across the street, less than a quarter mile away, to 325. Um, as Valerie pointed out, we did petition the Board of Trustees to amend the OR zoning district to allow animal related uses intensive um, and general that passed back in, I believe it was December. Um, so again, they're just proposing to move their operations here. Um, what they aren't is a doggy daycare. I just want to put that to rest. They're not a, a kennel. They're not going to have, you can't go there. There's no overnight stays if you're going on vacation. They're also not a 24 uh, seven, you know, emergency service veterinary. It's, you know, by hour, you know, whatever, nine to five normal business hours. Um, so they're going to be occupying, or they're proposing to occupy the first floor. Um, Toy Textile will still retain an office on the first floor and then continue to use the basement for storage for their operations. Um, so I've, I've spoken with two of the neighbors, uh, the president of the HOA, Bar Margulis, as well as Abby Bergman um, on the phone, and I've received some of their email correspondence. So just to address some of their concerns, uh, I know Mr. Bergman said he does, wants to make sure there's no outdoor kennel. We're more than happy to agree. You know, we don't propose that. We're never going to do that. So that's fine. Um, boarding services are limited to animal recovery. As I said in my cover letter, that's exactly right. If an animal has surgery, they need to recover. That's where they do it. Um, there is no one stays 24-7 on property, but they do monitor by camera. And the person who's monitoring is less than five minutes away. So they would be able to get there relatively quickly. Um, we will have a designated area for animals to be walked. Uh, there will be garbage cans there. There will be uh, bag dispensers to pick up animal waste there. We'll have signs directing people to those locations. Um, we received uh, the Nelson Pope memo as well as Keller Sessions and, you know, relatively minor comments that we will have no problem addressing. So with that, I'm more than happy to answer any questions you have. Okay. Um, I, I, maybe, I mean, I don't, I don't know if the memos that we, would be a good starting point um, just to kind of go through some of those those items. Um, again, yeah, we didn't have too many comments on this. Uh, there is a proposed ramp, but we keep that as well. Proposed ramp in the front. The confusion on one of the architectural layouts is it's calling a proposed ramp in the back and not just the front. So that was a confusion. I was just like, um, if you scroll down, all of that, all that, even though when I said scroll down, I'm sorry. so you see it says new ramp in the back, and then it says existing ramp in the front, but the site plan is showing new ramp in the front and no ramp in the back. So I'm just in no way. Good evening, I'm Lou Macy, the project architect. So that ramp is not going to be handicap accessible. That's just for dogs that are in recovery and difficulty to walk, they would go down that ramp to relieve themselves in the back. Okay, you might, you'll have to show that on the side. Absolutely, yes. There is a stream in the back, there is a 50 foot offset that you're gonna have to stay out of. It's there is a current door there with steps. So yeah. we're, we're proposing to remove the steps and just replace it with a ramp no, for that yeah. reason. And that's a side plan. Yeah, yeah that, absolutely. That would help stand it. Um, the, the other item is you're gonna need ADA spaces with ADA compliance signage. Um, that, that was the, I think that was the biggest of ours, uh, elevations and grades, just to show that you're complying with ADA standards on the ramp. Um, sure. And like I said, the details. Um, yeah, and that was it. Those are the biggest ones. And then adding the, the, the stream and the buffer. Yeah. Just how far that was improving. So, yeah, we'll get our surveyor out there to pick that up. And we just had a few other additional things. I think you're uh, just dealing with like trash loading and deliveries, like if that can be noted where that's going to be on the plan. As well as if you're only proposing any signs, so some details on that, and um, and then also any if there's going to be any changes to like outdoor lighting or um, on the building. Okay. And then the last was the outdoor use. I know you uh, confirmed all that, but in terms of if there is going to be space for that, like you know, so that people if they do step in and see dogs out there, like you were just saying, some dogs might need to be walked or whatever. If that just can be defined on the site. Well, yeah. Absolutely, it will be. I think you you noted you know like trash trash receptacles for you know for waste and mm -hmm. any bags and that, that that's going to be posted and that should also be on the site. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Board questions on this. I, I just wanted to clarify something, Tony. The um, you mentioned the stream and what what is the regulation with 
respect to the stream in the back of the property? It's a 50 foot pop for it. I think that's right. They will need to get yes. a wetland. Okay. Only if there was a Yeah, maybe that's a but, but it's, it appears looking at it, they, they, they have the room. Oh, they have just a slow, okay, just to be sure, especially with the ramp in the back of the building, because I was measuring to the front of the building when I was looking at that. Right. So. I was confused about the ramp. Too. Okay, thank you. Other, yeah. It was, uh, no, I thought I saw. Okay, um, well, one, of, one of the questions, and again, you know, you you noted some of the neighbor complaints um, or uh, concerns. Um, so you, there was a, a comment regarding, you know, it's not a daycare, this is not a kennel. Um, you know, is there is there a maximum number of of animals that would ever be on site unattended overnight? Is that defined? Is that they expect to have one to three animals overnight per month? So. I can't imagine. I mean, I think it would be two max, but I I will get you an answer and come back with that. Yeah, it would be good to kind of understand that number. And if we're looking sure. at kind of capping this, just understanding that there's there's not a kind of a limitless number there. Also, a question. I remember there was a note on one of the memos. I forget which one about um the I guess it's the Hoy textile mm -hmm. of being. Uh, storage versus warehouse, but was that addressed or I don't know. That was just a, a note that was put on. They're going to continue to operate how they've been operating since the building was constructed, I think, back in the 80s. So if it's storage, we'll change the classification to storage. We just use that to, there was no uh, parking calculation for storage, and we didn't want to just say, oh, we have this whole basement and not provide any parking for it. So we just, that's why we labeled it warehouse. And is Hoyt continuing to own the property or is the property being split or uh, purchasing the property? The entire property. The entire and then property. leasing back. And we're going to lease back to Hoyt. Okay. They'll have a small area, like I said, on the first floor, and then all the storage in the basement. And is that there? That's the same configuration that they currently have? So the. Where in the basement it will be, in the office upstairs, their office space is shrinking a little bit. Okay. Um, all right. I mean, any any other questions here before we go into a public hearing? Maybe we'll open up the public and we might have questions after this. It works. Let's do that. Can I have a motion to open a public hearing? Angelica King motion to open a public hearing. Michael Aronson, second. All right. Any objections? No objections. Um, so I would like to welcome if there's anybody here to speak with an application. Um, you can come up. Yeah, probably. Yeah, just one at a time. You know, um, I don't. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it looks like you're, you're only good. Go somebody was going first. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. And then, so just a reminder, I know that Maddie had set this up up at the top of the meeting. Yeah. Um, that's your, you know, to make sure that you will, that you have signed in if you're at yes. the beginning of the meeting. If not, when you come up, just uh, make sure you're speaking clearly into the microphone. We're going to make sure that it's. All right. Um, speaking speak to the microphone, you're not going to hear yourself here, but it'll. Uh, help you to be heard online um, and state your name and place of residence before you speak. Um, and then um, I'll, I'll try to um, you know, see if we can get these done in, in three to five minutes. And if you need, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll evaluate. All right. Okay. Uh, my name is Abby Bergman. I live at 19 Ponsu Lane. I live in Mystic Point Condominium on a unit that directly abuts the, the property in question. Uh, in I went to the uh, village board in November and in December, uh, the I believe it was this board, the planning board did approve the language, uh, a change in language for the use in the OR district, allowing animal animal related uses and um, in conditional uh, intensive animal uses. At the time of that hearing, and there are others there with me, uh, the applicant said that they had no intention of asking for conditional use, but I think that may be part of the general application. And I believe that your decision is what will drive whether the contract for the sale goes through. Um, I cannot object to the applicant purchasing the property. Now that animal related uses have been allowed, that ship has already sailed. Um, it's my understanding that the term conditional for intensive animal use means that the board, this board can impose conditions. That's what, and I hope I'm correct in that, in that assumption. 
This board can always impose conditions as part of a site plan approval. Conditional use, if you, um, in the code, there are certain criteria that have to be met for the board to approve a conditional use permit. Right. Well, the conditional use, I mean, I, I have the wording says that you can have stables, which I know is not in question, uh, kennels, outdoor kennels. Uh, if you look at your wording from conditional use, unless you put conditions on it, all of the above are permitted. There, there's another section that says to grant a conditional use permit, the board has to make certain findings in terms of the impact, generally mostly related to the impact on the neighborhood um, and things like that. Um, so okay. the code in front of the applicant, actually, the applicant actually submitted uh, a response to each and every one of the yeah they in the applicants um cover letter submission yeah I, they I, through I, each of those criteria I, I understand that but do you as a board set those conditions those are in the code right this board has the ability to impose additional to impose conditions on the approval for instance something that was mentioned and I think the chair already mentioned it and asked about it this board could impose a condition that says there can't be any outdoor kennels or dog runs or right. outdoor that, That's activities. exactly what I'm asking. Right. So this board does have the ability to do that. Right. It, that's exactly why I'm here. Um, the property directly above a residential area and in consultation with several of my neighbors, I'm requesting that the following conditions be applied. Uh, no outdoor kennels. Now, the applicant has said that, but the applicant said that they were not requesting intensive use back in November. So I think that needs to be the board imposing that condition. Um, the boarding services are limited to animals recovering from surgery, which again, they have said that that would be the case. We don't know what will happen tomorrow or once you approve it or one month down the line, which is why I, want, I prefer the language come from the board and not from the applicant. Um, Animals are kept overnight as they recover from surgery will be attended. I think they should be attended by an individual rather than camera because that could be a great nuisance to people who live within the nearest neighbors 103 feet. Um, uh, I did look at the current vet site and I walked by and saw an animal uh, relieving itself in the parking lot without a person picking up after the animal. Now, I can't hold the vet responsible for that because I'm sure they would not condone that, but it happened, and that could happen right outside my dining room. Um, so I suggest that they create an area for pests to relieve themselves on the southern side of the building, which is not the side that abuts our property, and uh, have a pet waste dispenser, which I think is more than reasonable, Post signs within the facility indicating where the dog, dog relief area is located. And finally, perhaps participate in the creation of an attractive vegetative plant uh, fence or plantings to create a buffer between uh, what was a very wonderful neighbor, the art barn, which didn't have much activity, and a different kind of neighbor, which may have a different kind of activity. And uh, having but a great deal of life savings into purchasing this house. Um, and, and then I've looked at the zoning, which is not for here. I mean, you could go up to 36 feet and occupy 30% of the lot. And I mean, th this could become a nightmare. So I'm happy that the vet wants to be there because they want to stay in the same building. Now they have slept in their application. They have no intentions of expanding the building at this time, to me, that is that's red red lights. Now I know you can't say that they can't because they are entitled to expand it. But what I'm asking for is for the board to impose the conditions that the that the applicant has already agreed to, to just put it in your minutes or your whatever regulations you have. So I have no no quarrel with the vet being there. I mean I. I, I'm here for guiding eyes for the blind. I love dogs. Um, and uh, I just think that, uh, I just don't know the procedure whether you can actually set those conditions that the applicant has already agreed to, or do you take it on faith that the applicant won't come back tomorrow and say, oh, now we need a kennel. Now we need this. 
Now we need that. Now we need stables, which I don't think is going to be the case, but all that is in the code. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. Are there other folks who are here to speak? Sure, come on up. Same rules as I said before. He did not sign in. Thank you. Thank you. Kenneth Graham, 26 Ivory Road, Mystic Point. A uh, question we have is first of all, you mentioned something about wetlands behind the property. So, would that in itself restrict the future extension of the building? Going into the buffer, extending. Well, anyways, that is that distance. Do we know the distance from the it's wetlands? That's why I just I just estimated to the part of the property to so the front of the view ramp is done. They said and, they were going to add it yeah. to the plant. So. so I mean, fifty being the fifty foot buffer as the law, they would have room to extend if they wanted to, without because affecting we found the application currently before yeah. the board, not each one. Okay, then the other question is: Is there going to be a crematorium? In the facility, we we could ask the uh, Ooh, never thought of we could ask the applicant that question. Thank you. And I, I don't even know if that's permissive a permittable use in this. Typically, they they don't do it, and they don't go around. Yeah, they have they send them. The the we ask the applicant that question. There's no crematorium. Thank you. We're more than happy to have all those con as conditions of mm -hmm. our approval. And as I told Mr. Bergman yesterday, he says that we said we weren't gonna have intensive animal related uses. That was my specific petition in August to the board of trustees was requesting intensive animal related. It said in my petition and it said in my cover letter. So from August until now, it was always the intent. That was our stated intent. That's what we relayed to the board of trustees and relating to you guys as well. Okay. Thank you. My ask another somewhat related question. I mean, make sure there's no, if there's anybody else who, who wants to speak just uh, before I, and, and then I'll let you ask that question. Um, while we're in public hearing. Is there anybody else in the room? Um, I don't see anybody moving. Is there anybody on Zoom who's who's here to speak to this application? You can use the hand raise function if you'd like to speak. Um, and I'll leave the, the hearing open for a moment while you uh, you right. can ask that question. That's true. Please come up and speak to the microphone. Right, this is probably funny, but uh, I spoke to the attorney yesterday and we had a very copacetic conversation. Um, as I understand, I tried to look at the land maps over the course of the last few weeks, and I've measured them with the measuring tool, and the property goes all the way down. I don't know if you're familiar with it, it all the way down a ravine to the very bottom of what is the nature trail at at Mystic Point, and uh, it, it requires a 100 foot setback for any building that would be built. So, if this is the ravine, you do a little triangulation and go up here. It looks like they could build right up to our unit now, with with uh, a fifty a fifty foot side setback. But the attorney told me that the land, the actual, um, the actual boundary goes from wherever it hits the bottom of the ravine. So you'd go up and go a hundred feet this way, and you'd hit the very top of that berm. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think we have that information in front of us right now, and, and this application isn't about any, right. you know, this is the existing building, the existing footprint. Right, I just wonder, in the future, how could I find that answer? Um, that's, you know, it's, it's in the code. I don't know if there's, that's like a, I don't know if the if staff has any suggestions. Surveys, you would need, to, right, there was yeah. a lot of more technical information. Yeah, because I looked at the top, topography, and it's a severe drop the last hundred feet. So if they could go from the bottom of the ravine and go a hundred feet forward, they hit the land up adjacent to my unit. So I think yeah, down. yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. If, if they were ever to make an application for an addition, all these things would have to be looked. Right, right, right. And there would be a survey provided. Yeah, thank, thank you for that. And okay. it would have to come before this board. Thank right. you. Um, okay, so I don't see anybody else using the hand raise function. There's nobody else here to speak right now. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn the public hearing? Yeah. 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 Y
All right, Sal, then I make the motion to adjourn the public hearing. Michael Aronson, second. All right, any objections? No objections. I, mean, I think that was a productive conversation. I, I think um, we heard, I think, some, you know, some potential conditions um, that we could apply here. I think that's the purpose of this hearing um, is to just to hear concerns of, of, of the folks who are you know, potentially going to be impacted by the project. Um, so does the applicant have any any further questions in terms of understanding your next steps, what you need to come back to us with? We're going to make the plan revisions and resubmit. Okay. Um, Valerie, Tony, Linda, any other uh, points that we need to make before we adjourn this? We don't have anything. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn the application? I, I we know we just closed the public hearing. I apologize. Um, but uh, you, you, if you have other questions, A, we're going to be back here um, at the next meeting or at a subsequent meeting, so you should no, keep an eye I just wanted everybody from Mystic Point that's here to stand up to show you how many people are here. I, I, I think I, 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 I really appreciate that, and I, and I recognize that. And I, and I imagine when we adjourn this application in a moment, I'll say a lot of people say, thank you. Uh, and then there will really be parking in the way. Um, we're glad you're here, and we, we understand it, and I'm sure the applicant does as well. Uh, okay, can I have uh, a motion to adjourn this application for this evening? Bobby Bowker making a motion to adjourn. Michael Aronson, second. Any objections? No objections. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. No, no, we need this as a jar for more information. You had to resubmit this plan and you can't put it with additional. Yes. We can't. 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 We Okay, uh, moving on, we have our next item is uh, letter F on our agenda. This is uh, Planning Board 02 2024 and BAR 06 2024. This is 16 Campers Road. Um, and this is a uh, application is seeking site plan and BAR to legalize construction yard and accessory garage structure. Um, Valerie, I don't know if you want to give us just a very quick kind of you know, rundown on, on, on how we got uh, this I'm going to defer over to Linda. Right, this is really, this is, <laughs> 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 no, this is a project that's an application that initially started at the prior to my yeah. So I think it's probably best for her to get a little background on the CBA and CBA approval. And then Tony and I can talk about our comments. <laughs> So just, um, in the beginning, <laughs> and, and actually, just I don't know if there's ways we can not be maybe this help. We can go yell at shut, shut the noise to the uh, a little further away. Um, so the um, property owners were um, issued violations um, for operating a uh, not permitted. Um, contractor's yard on the property, um, as well as um, the house having five units. Well, the violation initially didn't include the house, um, although Joe's initial referral did. Um, so, but anyway, so they um, initially tried to get the property rezoned. Um, the board of trustees did not um, want to pursue the rezoning. So instead they applied for a use variance to allow the use to continue. Um, the zoning board um, spent a lot of time looking at this property over the course of a couple of years actually. And um, during that, it also came out that the house was being used as a five family house. Um, after a fair amount of research, this is in a single family zone today. At one time it was a two family zone. It had been a T zone at one time. So what was determined after some research was that it was actually a legal non-conforming two family. Um, so they were requesting to increase it to five. They finally adjusted that. Um, so they requested a use variance for a four family where two families were allowed. And then also for um, to continue the use of the yard. <laughs> The um, again, the zoning board looked at this for a long period of time. Um, 
try to really understand the use and have the applicants really define what they want to do there and reduce and and they were asked to reduce the scale of the use as well. So um, I think you've all seen a copy of the zoning board decision, ultimately granting the use variance, which is for a four family house um, and for a landscaper's yard. So it's strictly limited to landscaper, not construction. Um, it is removing some of the garage buildings um, it is require, um, providing parking specifically for the house, eight parking spaces in an area specific to the house with a fence separating that area from the landscaper's yard, um, parking spaces for employees within the landscaper's yard. Jim keeps yep. nodding your head. <laughs> um, parking spaces for employees within the landscaper's yard. And then there were conditions about no outdoor storage of vehicles or materials or equipment, um, but that all those materials would be stored inside the remaining garage structures. Um, really trying to clean up the site and lessen the intensity of the landscaper's yard use um, as part of that process. Um, now the those garages were built without permits, so they also um, require site plan and, and BAR. They also will require variances. So the approach to this application was get the use variance first, because without that, they have nothing. And then come to your board to start the site plan and, and BAR process. <laughs> And then when you're comfortable with that, as, as you've done on other applications, you will send them back to the zoning board for the area variances that they will need. Um, there, and, and um, the building inspector, we spoke to the building inspector the other day. We're just trying to establish, um, and I did find some information on old permits on the house. We're trying to establish if anything on the house um, changed and requires BAR for the house in addition. I know there's a proposal to add some trellis. Right. Um, so I don't know if that's something that you would want to look at as a BAR type of item. It's a lot of different finishes on the exterior of that house now. Um, there were some additions over time. There was a porch that was enclosed. There was a small one-story addition. Doesn't look like anything's had any BAR approvals. Um, so we're we're trying, we discussed a little the other day, trying to establish really what on the house might require BAR approval, um, but certainly the garages require BAR approval. The zoning board was the lead agency for CECRA. Um, they did circulate a uh, notice of intent and did a coordinated review. They adopted a negative declaration. Um, it's not a lot of construction here. There's some demolition. Right. <laughs> um, and um, a lot of effort was made by the zoning board to really try to allow them to continue the use to some extent. It is, it's a large piece of property for the neighborhood. It's over an acre, um, but really limit and control it to reduce the impacts um, on the neighborhood. So they got the variance in the fall, um, and I think they've been working on finalizing their plans and incorporating some things. Um, and so that's that's where we are. And right. Happy to answer any questions. And Anybody didn't follow that. <laughs> um, no, no, that was a very good description of what I clearly noticed. Been living this application <laughs> for a couple of years. Well, a long time coming to here. So, uh, and, and I think what I might I think is just helpful is to clarify what our role is here, right? So, so the I mean, all of these use variances um, have been kind of granted, formalized. The, the remaining area variances. We'll we'll go back to the zoning at some point, um, but our our role is to is to simply look at the site plan in the context of the variances that were granted, and you know understand that the site plan works. Make sure if mm -hmm. there are any conditions or you know others um, that would be appropriate to make sure that it sticks with this you know a with the spirit of the um, of the zoning approvals, but also just in terms of how it functions in terms of our normal site plan oversight. Great. And just some examples. I mean, the, the zoning board was cognizant of the fact that you were going to do a site plan review. So they did have a landscape plan 
they kind of said, yeah, we approve this landscape plan, but it's really subject. You know more about landscaping than they do. So they they really want you to look at the landscape plan um, that they did have. Um, they were looking at it primarily from a screening standpoint. Um, and there's there's some fencing and, and landscaping and, and a lot of things like that, that they they required certain things, but they really didn't want to tread on your site plan. And 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 the fact that that's more within your purview, then you know that's not really what they do. Sure, it would be I think helpful to have the site plan up. To you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the existing right. This that's proposed. It's kind of helpful to have them side by side a little bit, right? So we can see the deletions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was no laid out parking existing um, or anything like that. It was a wall, no separation between the residential and, and the commercial use. And that was a concern to the zoning board. And I know we have the the, the applicant uh, applicants up here. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I need to say much tonight. So um, appreciate. It. Um, thanks, Linda. <laughs> so uh, Jim Manicarico with Cronin Engineering. Um, she Linda has it pretty much nailed down. We spent a lot of late nights here with the ZBA. So. Um, as you can see from the site plans, uh, from the existing plan to the proposed condition, uh, some of the main things that are happening are two of the garage structures that exist are to be removed. So those are right, exactly. I forgot Maddie was there many nights too. And she was <laughs> um, so those those structures are you know need to be removed. Um, it'll open up an area. Um, on the on on the property uh, within the contractor's yard, uh, we were asked to provide separation for safety purposes between the uh, tenants of the of the house and the yard itself, uh, which we have done by uh, proposing uh, chain link fencing, the railing gate um, right in that area with an entrance right there at the corner. Uh, we provided, as Linda mentioned, eight parking spaces in that area, which was previously material storage. Um, we have provided four parking spaces for employees within the yard uh, right now. And we have, we do have some existing fencing, I think, at the back of the yard where the green starts. So that's an existing vegetated area. Uh, it's really no trees in that area, but it's all grass or grass-like material. Um, some of the unique things about this property are it is five times larger than the zone requires. Uh, it's by far the largest piece of property in the in the zone, um, and the area that's behind the house for the contractor's yard. Uh, is about 15 feet higher than the road itself. So you don't see this at all by, you know, from driving by the site. Uh, you know, you, you can really only look up the driveway and even that, even when you drive by and you look up there, you can't see anything more than, you know, just the pavement and uh, what's behind it, which is fenced is on that corner part of the lot. Um, the other unique thing is that it really doesn't have any neighbors very close to the property lines, the, at least the structures, obviously the property is about the lot, but I provided a map that, that does show um, the closest structures, or all the structures, in fact, and, and how far away they are from the property line itself. So that may be helpful, helpful to you at some point in your review. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is uh, we do have uh, a lot of existing fencing and vegetation trees, uh, shrubs around the perimeter of the property. Um, we agreed 
and for being proposed to replace a lot of the fencing. Um, some of it's existing stockade fencing that's you know kind of been weathered and in disrepair. Um, and we do at the very rear of the property, uh, that's a, I believe that's a brand new uh, PVC fence between that neighbor and our, and our property. Um, as you can see, like on the, along the uh, north uh, property line, there is, you know, a fair amount of existing dense uh, uh, vegetation, trees, shrubs, things like that. The vegetation that's shown on this plan is mostly existing. Yes, yes. The the colored, uh, you know, some of the proposed vegetation uh, that's being pointed at those are those are the proposed uh, plantings. You know, we were kind of we were asked by the zoning board to somehow make the aesthetic of the property at least the front of it, you know, a bit nicer. Um, and we we had hired uh, Lucille Munns. Um, to prepare that, as you mentioned, part of that was to put a trellis underneath the open, front of the open porch, um, to kind of make that look a little bit nicer. So, and, and just in terms of like hardscape versus softscape, I, I, I see the coloration, you know, the green, which I'm assuming is mostly lawn areas, right. but I'm also seeing some junipers and a looks like a, a maple tree that are in the white area, which I thought was all paved. Is how is that? Um, that you're talking about the uh, bottom left or right hand yeah, corner, the, the, uh, okay. and the fence right next to the house, right? Yeah, well, that is, right now is paved, I believe, but that would be removed. And I think we have a curb there because we really couldn't fit another parking space there anyway, which would you know be able to back out you know easily. So that that area will be uh, you know reclaimed or it will be returned to. To a, a previous, so uh, that should be so, yeah. Right. Sure. There's a landscape picture, like a mock-up. Yeah, yeah. There is actually. They uploaded a picture of it. It's a landscape picture. I thought you wanted to love it. <laughs> Nicely landscape. <laughs> one one of the questions that I had, what we discussed, was that area in the back where you have a grass area. You have that for material storage. Is that just a mistake? Are you actually going to be storing materials back there? That's a material didn't allow for that. Correct. And if it is, it's just a mistake. Yeah, and it says materials. It says okay. materials. It shouldn't. Sure. Okay. Should say the opposite that it's a that it's a planted area, and no material landscape. storage permitted. Oh, I, okay. Yeah, I was going back to what Joe was talking about. Okay. There's there's more of a thing. Right, so that was that really kind of referring to uh, John, John Apollonia, by the way, uh, the applicant. Um, so if you just go back, Maddie, yeah, right. But so where that tree, one of the trees in question, that area, I don't believe, is, is that dirt? Right. Uh, uh, right. That will be, right. Okay. okay, so just for So that will be changed, right. Yep. Yeah. We can point that out more clearly. So the, the portion on the site plan that is green, and maybe this is the question that's just been asked and you're answering it, but when you remove a couple of those structures and then it's sort of a wide open space, what is happening to that space? Is it going is it paved? Is it gonna be it's just not clear to me from looking at the site plan right, that that's okay. gonna be used. I mean, it, it it seems like it could lend itself to storage of materials, even though you're not supposed to store materials because it is such a large space. Well, and actually, just to take a step yeah, back, right? just, yeah. um, Linda, when you were going through the um, the the zoning resolution, I mean, I, I know it's clear that you know equipment was not going to be stored. You know, the, the storage was going to be interior. Is is there is there going to be any exterior material storage? No, it says materials is in that same paragraph. Right, that's what says, I thought. Yeah. So, so when we talk about material storage, that really should only be limited to the interior spaces, anyway. Well, right? Except for one of the conditions specifically says um, the commercial use of the property is restricted to a yard used by a landscape contractor for the storage of equipment and materials only, and only in areas as shown on the plans. So we need to make sure that the that plans that's... specifically note 
Yeah, that back area and that and the material the back area needs to be changed. That should just be a vegetated area. Right. It's like mm, in, that's in the on the middle so area is called storage yard. Right. So that's why I think it needs to be better defined as to exactly where you're planning to potentially store materials. If it's only going to be interior, then it should just it specifically should be noted which interior garage is your planning to store material. And and if anything, if this board is going to allow anything to be stored in the yard, it should be identified what, where, and how much. And I mean this this may be pedantic, but like how are we defining storage? Is that overnight? Is that is that defined clearly in the code, or is that something that we have to? But I almost think that it probably would be good if the applicant provided like a narrative yeah. describing exactly what it is that they're probably you mean in terms of equipment and stuff like that. Yeah. So that and it may be seasonal, like in the spring they have mulch or you know, um, but it should have quantities, location, and timing. And part of this is so that in the future, if questions come up, then the building inspector will be able to go out to the site or come to code enforcement and they would be able to say clearly this meets the site plan or doesn't. Right. right. It's to everybody's benefit. Mm -hmm. It's clarification. So we can we can do that. We can clarify it. I think originally we had, there was storage in the rear area. That's just what was existing. That's what was where, and that was on there. So we'll we'll correct that. Right, and you, and there were discussions about not storing right. anything back right. there. That was a sensitive. That was the early on in the proceeding. The neighbors to the rear right. um, did show up. And that was like the one sensitive area. I think if you looked at that other map, there was a neighbor somewhat close to that very back part of the site. Um, and is there any other, I, I, I recognize there's existing fencing and new fencing in that area. Is there any other green screening? I guess there's some existing on the opposite side of the property line. Um, but right now there's, you know, the landscape plan in the front of the built of the property shows a lot of existing and new plantings, but I don't really see anything in the back. Uh, there's, there's also another fence uh, in between right where the green ends. Mm -hmm. So we kind of feel that between the two fences, there's really not much more to do back there. Um, you can tell us if you think differently, obviously. But you know, the, the garage itself, also to the north, that obviously you know provides a lot of screening um, to those neighbors to the north. Mm -hmm. um, what does the large green parcel at the back back up? Is that residential? I, I'm trying to. Uh, that's just part of our parcel. What does it back up onto? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah that the very yeah. oh, yes. parcel. That's right. Yeah, that's well, probably the from Croton Avenue backs up on properties that are on Croton Avenue, or I'm just, it's such a huge. Well, uh, upper Croton Avenue is to the south. Um, there's a bunch of houses there right at the rear of the property that kind of. I guess kind of short sure driver. So there's a couple of houses close yeah. to the yeah. rear of the property, and that's why that was a concern. Yeah, that resident to the directly to the rear of us is the closest resident, um, I believe. Is that the garage? Is it a garage? The one right behind us. Yeah. That's it says residence, but um, residence is it's, a, it's a, a garage accessory to that residence. Yeah. yeah. So 77? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. We'll correct that. So I mean, it's, I mean, that's a garage. Sorry, I was just going to note, I mean, I've lived in the area for a long time, mm -hmm. and I agree, you really cannot tell. I mean, had no idea that this lot was so huge or that these uses were going on there. But just to clarify, this is not a retail landscaping site. So. No, it's not. Okay. I have a question about the shared driveway. How does that work? Like, you have people, the residences, and the vehicles for the landscaping in the same access. Right. Yes. And that's currently what's happening? That's exactly yeah. correct. And there's no defined parking for one versus the other today. Oh, okay. Yeah, right now it's... So everybody just parks right here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. The zoning board very much wanted separation. Okay. You have parking for the tenants that's over where those uh, employee parking is now. We're just going to relocate them over to the other area with the closer area. to the house. If right. they the same plan, yeah. Okay. And and in terms of the residential property, so that is going to be it's a currently a five family that's not going to be for a four. Right. Yeah. To come back through the apartments to meet the 
the SAR, I believe, the, the minimum for retirement anyway. So that was that was the uh, give on our side too. Do you think that's one of the comments that to submit those drawings with the work with that, and also to make sure to confirm that you're not going to need area variances for that as well. That you meet the minimum habitable. Right. Yes. Right. Are we, are we, are we, well, it's not part of the spot. No. Okay. No problem. We'll submit that for the. Uh, I know, obviously, we submitted that to the zoning board, but all the other apartments on the first and second floors uh, met the minimum requirement, and we just had to combine the two apartments. So we'll, we'll submit all that information. Um, and, and just just in terms of, when we go back to ground cover a little bit, because it's. Um, you're you're going to be removing garages. You're going to be removing structures. Are you, is there going to be new asphalt there? Is this is this all the existing asphalt to remain? Do you have calculations yeah, on? We're going to get rid of everything, clean it all up. We'll get this right to make it pretty. And in terms of permeable area, like there are, are those. Um, it, it reduces if anything to the area where the trees and all this stuff. Right, but is that yeah, I just increases permeable. The rest of it's already paid. No, I, yeah, I understood. <laughs> um, it's okay. Um, no, no but I just you know it's, it's a large area, and I don't know if that was if that was part of any of the zoning resolutions or if that's been looked at or if it's as of right as is proposed, which it may be. I just it, it has it was not looked at. Um, I would certainly think that you you know if you want to make sure that I mean it's been that way, but right. if you want something to make sure there are no drainage issues, um, we don't know how long it's been that way. We suspect probably for a pretty long time, but. Um, so, no. just to clarify, here, 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 so he can. <laughs> I mean, born and to the house. That's the way it's been my whole life. So, so the the garages that we're removing, if we repay them, we're, we're not really changing the impervious areas. Right? So, garage was also pre-existing before my family bought the house. But it's but it still was never permitted, so there was never a plan for it. So. The the paving of the whole yard was never never went through an approval process, so we just want to make sure, um, you know, if there's anything that that can be done or need should be done. I don't know. It doesn't seem nobody's complained about any drainage problems, but and even just like in the corner, like like near the residential parking where those topo lines look really close to each other. I don't know if that's a very steep. Uh, I'll tell you the truth. Okay. What that is is it's a pile of uh, stone. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, We've been removed. Yeah. yeah. That was going to be one of our comments. You have to apply to the five percent. Yeah. So I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, what's it? Yeah. So, yeah. So it was that was a it was stone pile that's understood. Been, been, so that's pretty flat from that contour line right in about the middle, right right to the uh, to where the tree is, right up to that wall, where that okay. So where the stone. Like stone got contour in yeah, Absolutely. That was from the survey or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just to clarify, the remaining garage that will be left there, is that used to add additional parking spaces or storage? Uh, we said um, no parking. Are we talking about for the equipment parking? Currently, right. the entirety of the parking spaces, like the garage, is not going to be providing additional space. It's just for storage. Like for chamber, yeah, 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 right. No vehicle There'll be no um, like trucks, landscaper trucks parked on the site. On the site, yeah. That's what I was going for. Okay, so variance for. Are they in the garages? No, the garages. I mean, you're taking away. Well, I'm, I'm away. asking. <laughs> I'm taking away garages, and and uh, so now I have to move all my chainsaws, lawnmowers inside the garage. You know, out of the other garages into this garage, so there's no room for. So you're proposing okay, trucks to any trucks. Type of garages? I mean, they look big. They're not that right. They're not deep enough to fit a pickup truck. Well, you, I think part of I think this goes to what Valerie was talking about before is they're going to have to show like what vehicles are going to be there, where they're going to be parked, and how many. Yeah. 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 That's fine. We're going to add that to the plan. I believe, in fact, that originally we had all the equipment, and all the vehicles that were at the site that was on the site plan. Yeah. So and then but we'll do something so. in the garages. We'll do something. So, yeah. yeah. Um, anything that's not going to be in a garage because those parking spaces are for employees' cars. Correct. 
Um, so, you know, again, this board's got to see, you know, the zoning board didn't really want a lot of stuff out on the site. So I'm let's look for material storage. I'm looking for parking. But let's, but the, this board, and we've done this on other applications, how many, mm -hmm. you know, where are they going to go? Understood. And, and I think also for, you know, right now the, the, the storage yard is, is one kind of amorphous space. And I think it was, it was pointed out before. So if you're going to either, you know, mark out or stripe where the um, vehicles are going to go and kind of which vehicles they are and, you know, um, then I, I think it would be helpful to, to annotate and that doesn't need to be marked on the ground necessarily, but on the site plan, you know, you know, you know, piled materials, whether that's, you know, gravel mm -hmm. mulch. But your vehicles are going to be parked overnight. The employees aren't going to be there overnight. Right? No, overnight there's no employee parking. So um, there's just employee spots potentially. Potentially, yeah. But except for they're bigger than cars. Yeah. Right. I mean, they're they're longer. It's not the same vehicles. Yeah. But pretty much during day, most of the vehicles are gone. It's just at nighttime. Okay. All right. But having having that inventory is something we would want to see on this. Okay. Yes. We can give you that. No problem. Um, other, well, I, I think Tony, it, we kind of left you out a little bit. <laughs> a lot of my points were touched upon. I mean, you know, I was looking at the back area, I see this big gate opening. I'm thinking, okay, they're going to spark stuff back there. And, you know, I was concerned with dirt as opposed to having something more stable there. You can almost see the drainage pattern comes through there. Sure. The existing contours, um, 5% parking, you'll have to show show me some spot shots that you have that. Mm -hmm. um, I believe an ADA space is going to be required for the residents. Um, so you might have to add an additional space. And then do you have 2% for them to get into the house? Or do you have, you know, ramps, all the requirements of the ADA to get somebody, if you did rent to somebody, you know, that needed that requirement? One's walk-in level, one apartment, that's the one I... Born and raised in, let's say. Yeah, I mean, step you probably want to show that you comply to that. You rent out a space to somebody that has a wheelchair or, or needs those amenities. Yeah, they're going to have to still make the modification. They're going to have to provide plans for the interior modifications to the house for Joe. Um, and he's going to have to, you know, go through the building permit and seal process for that. So part of that is if there are, and I know there's already been uh, an inspection of the property for code compliance. Um, fire, some other yeah. things, fire. Um, there's already been a, a fire inspection. So there's going to be a bunch of things that they're going to have to do for code. Yeah. Okay. And, and, you know, we talked about the material that you're putting back, mm -hmm. the detail of what you're going to do. I, I didn't know, are you planning on resurfacing the whole lot? I mean, for me to stripe it up, it, the asphalt's it's old. It's just, yeah, it's, it's old. Like yeah, it's 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 it it's it so so it's just it's show those things. So make it look nice. So yeah. How big a lot is it? It's 1.16 acres. Uh, we said it was one and three quarters. That other piece right there. It's like one point two, I thought. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. It rounded to. <laughs> You're probably lied to you. I thought there's only one or something like that. I always thought it was one and three quarter. I don't know. I don't know if something got messed up in the. Because mm -hmm. okay. that's that like. So the, the house number is 16. And uh, the house before that, I think, is um 20. So like it would be like it's almost like three lots if you if you go by the numbers on on Campus Road. Numbers don't ever make sense. I know. Thinking you're gonna. So I would do it as being one and three quarter, and the paperwork I see now says one yeah one point two point two. A lot smaller than I thought it was, even though it's big. Um, one of the entire lot is one point, not just not the back area, right? The no, area. the entire lot. But there's like that that area right where the let's say the new tenant parking would be. I don't know if that's added into that because that used to be a separate tax lot a long time ago. Like yeah, like the survey says the survey says that, and I double checked it. So it that's what it is. Yeah, one point two. Yeah, I was well, one of the other things I add is um, you know when you when you're doing that site plan what? with the vehicles and storage and stuff. Uh, I noticed that also, like on the lot, you have things like uh, um, fueling for like diesel fuel for, uh, I think you have containers and stuff. They're large tanks that I guess you use to fill up equipment and so forth. So if you're going to eh, continue to have such items such as that, please put that on the plan because where the locations and stuff or where that's going to be, we're just going to get more. I know some of that was removed. Yeah, I, was right? I think we talked about that. Yeah, we yeah, talked about that. 
confirm, you know, if any of that is going to be there, it needs to be shown. It will not be. Shown. And I think we can have, we could potentially have a condition in the site plan that no fuel storage is, is permitted. Yeah, that was something that was looked at during the zoning board process. Right. And, and because a couple of times on site visits, there was some things found that were not properly kept. So the, the site was cleaned up. What, a lot of that was. Removed. What about gasoline containers that you use for your equipment? I mean, most of the stuff stays in the trucks or the trailer. So you don't have any flammable storage no. areas. Is that a requirement, Joe? I no, I, I, no, like they don't have to. I just, you know, the way it's being used is I know that you have, you know, fuel there to fuel your equipment when you, as you need it. But if you're not proposing to do that, that's that's fine. I mean, you don't have to put on a plan. But if you are, just locate it on there because that's something they also will have to consider as part of the cycle. Yeah, well, my question was about um, like two gallon gasoline containers that they would just that they would store on the site. Do they need to have overnight flammable storage for no. those? No, those those are for limited amounts. Okay. So if they were storing like before, I think I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure of the size, but I think if you're storing say, any type of fuel and it holds I don't know 50 gallon like a dispense like dispensing fuel. But small uh, containers like that that you do for landscaping now. Um, so all right, so Tony, I, I, yeah, I thought you had one other comment. One other thing, I'm just I'm curious uh, are you planning on lighting the site or is it already lit? So I just well, well, it's lit, but one of the garages that are going to be demoed is where the light, some of the lighting okay. is for the back. If you're proposing any lighting, you know, I, I just show it. outlined it in my, my comment memo. If you're right. proposing lighting, you have to do this. I mean, the, the other garage that stays there has lighting, but we don't keep it on at night. There was one light that stayed on all the time. That's for the tenant parking. Yeah. And like two lights, I say, one on one side, one on the other for the tenant parking. So, actually guard, I don't really so if there's going to be new light for the new tenant parking? There's light already right there, though. Okay. Just, 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 lighting, just whatever, you know. We'll show you where all the lights are. Yeah. And we'll show that they're, you know, that they are facing down and shielded. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so make sure that they just try right. to get impacted by that. So it's it's not like major lighting. Yeah. Okay. So actually, can we have a motion to open the public hearing on this application? Any objections? No objections. Is there anybody here from the public to speak to this application tonight? I see anybody. Um, and I, but I do see a hand up. Um, so we can bring in, sorry, my class are a little funny. Marco? Yes. Uh, Marco Mandrel, I forgot to mention, he's our architect. Oh, um, so, I don't know. I don't know. He's not, you know. I should have let him in. I should have let him in earlier. You could have let us know. It's okay. Sorry about that. Uh, no, sorry. Um, so, Marco, we realize that you're not here from the public, that you are on the applicant's uh, team. Um, now we realize. <laughs> we now realize. Uh, so, as you're Hopefully you can hear me as you're being elevated to speaker, but I wasn't sure if you had any responses or, or comments that you wanted to add. Can you hear me? We can. Hi, I just, hi, uh, Marco Mandra, architect. I, uh, I just wanted to clarify a few things for the architectural review board. Um, first off, uh, for the garage itself, um, we're not really proposing any changes, mainly just some repairs. So I, I guess I'm just trying to get a little bit of direction on you know, what the board's going to be looking for. Um, do we need to upgrade the building at all or is just, you know, leaving it as is with some repairs that are needed going to be sufficient enough to please the board? That's a fair question. Um, I'm actually just going to leave the public hearing now for a moment while we're still in it because we kind of elevated you in the middle of that. Um, and then we will, I think that's it. We can maybe, while we're doing that, Maddie, maybe pull up the photographs. Um, so can I have a motion to adjourn the public hearing? Michael Aronson, motion to adjourn the public hearing. I'll be back for a second. Any objections? No objections, that motion carries. So we're, so we're out of the public hearing because there's no one here to, to from the public to speak to the application. But um, I think the BAR question is a important one. <laughs> so you guys know where you're going with this. Uh, it's not what we want. No, uh, I yeah. The building elevations 
So Marco, maybe you can, you know, so just kind of describe, you know, what, what you have. I mean, we, we're looking at photos, I guess. So. Sure. Uh, so the, the building is basically comprised of uh, what looks like a brick veneer, like a thin brick veneer uh, with uh, the CMU walls at the base that have been stuccoed or parged over. Um, the, the roof uh, obviously needs some repairs and probably needs a completely new, new shingles. Um, there's white fascia. Uh, the, the garage door framework needs to be repaired. Uh, de there's definitely some repairs that need to be done, um, but as a whole, I mean, I think the building, you know, is okay. Um, I just want to make sure if there's any comments that the board might might have that we can address them before the next meeting. Can you, can you just describe, it's hard for me to see exactly what that brick, you're referring to it as a brick veneer. Is that a thin brick? Is it a stucco? Is it a stucco? Is it a it's brick face stucco. Brick face stucco? Mm -hmm. It's a brick face stucco. Okay. And maybe it's just the photo, but it looks like it's just the shadows. It's not, is it, is there some delamination? Brick face stucco is a good shape. The wood needs work. I want to put a new roof on a garage. And even the, you, it's the same stucco that you have going on those piers. It looks like maybe it was a, a repair because it's a slightly different color. I think it's actually a little brick on that piers. Yeah, the, the bottom, it looks like it's real brick. It's all like the, the the sides, the two sides. I think they're like terracotta block or something like that, whatever they're called. Right. You want to know if they're doing a new roof. You want to know the color, the materials for the new roof. Yeah, and the fascias. It sounds like the wood, you know, all of that material that's being and and the garage the garage door surrounds black and white. How would you architectural shingle, asphalt color? Black, black, black. I would like to do black thing. I think it'll look nicer. You can do like exact fashion fashion boards there, probably. Yeah, yeah, exact or aluminum wrap. That's... And new gutters. New gutters, yeah. Definitely new gutters. I mean, just, the, the, the house needs to be the garage needs work. Yes. Yeah. What about the, what about the, this is what's facing the yard, what's facing the neighbors? The back. I don't know what it looks like, really. Yeah, I wasn't, to be honest, <laughs> that day, I wasn't able to get oh, to be on the neighbors. I believe it's block walls. Yeah. See it. It's, it's right up against the, it's property, right up against right. the property line. I think most people from Bell can't do it's the back yards and they're far. You can't, can't see it from Bell. From, uh, from your property line. It's there's, there. there's a bunch of properties kind of like uh, on the, like closer to Camp Woods. There's a couple of properties that are that are between Bell, the houses on Bell. Like, John, can you just speak closer to the mic so that it's picked sorry. up on the reporting? There's a, there's a few properties between... This, you know, the garages, let's say, and uh, Bell Avenue. The back of the property, there's only like the backyards that go up to the to the backyard where the green area is. But where the garages are, there's like longer properties, kind of similar to what where you are. Know, our property goes really deep. Yeah. But, you know, halfway like into the property, I say that's where the couple houses from Catholics get to before Bell Avenue yeah. houses and, and the, you know, gas station and right. everything else. There's houses before the gas station. There's two houses, I believe, maybe three. That are between the property there. But the so but the drawings are showing that material as being the same stucco, I guess. Or is it just a, I, a plain I mean, stucco? The stucco isn't broken, so it's not peeling, it's not doing anything. I just need to fix the roof, the soffits, the the garage door framing around the garage doors. I, mean, I recognize it's far away, but we are doing we're doing a BAR review. It'd be helpful to we document the, that condition yeah. for us to be able to see that. The we're, the stuff that you're saying, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, we're all all the soldiers. I think, as far as I remember, look, it's indicating that it's all stuck. Huh? I'm pretty sure it is all stucco. The whole rear of the garage. In the same way that you're documenting what's going to be facing kind of your own yard, we should have we should have that same level oh, of documentation. Says, yeah, up on top it says it's we're like not looking to top. change anything of the lower half of the garage. It really I, I understand. I, I you know I, I understand what your your intent is and we just you know we understand what you're asking. We just want to be able to see that so we can yeah. advise. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> it. Okay, so right. no, we're the drawing elevations clear. to be detailed further. I, so I'm actually right now looking even just photographic documentation of of those um, kind of secondary exposures. Okay. The, the... Right, and so I, I would assume the same thing then for the for the house itself, since all we're really doing in the house is combining 
two of the units on the second floor to make one larger unit so that it meets the minimum square footage and that we can bring it from a five unit to a four unit. I mean, as we sit here right now, we don't have a BAR for the house in front of us. The BAR is currently for the garage. But I think as that, you know, if, if there if that changes and there's a need to legalize anything on the house, then, yeah, we would need that same documentation. Okay. Okay, thank you. So we are we are asking to be clear for the, the plans for the house that show the, the layout, the layout the because that, that is pertinent to our site plan review, not to our BAR review. We, we do have that. We will provide that, yeah. That was that was actually done during the ZBA application, so we do have that. We, if, we, if I didn't we, submit we, it, I would know, apologize. Real, or not at the moment. Because um, I know it's kind of a lot of different. <laughs> well, not the house itself so. is all vinyl. I mean, it's not really that different. It's up for like the the additions. The yeah. the the, the, back, the back side of the house, the front side of the house is all is like all the blue vinyl yeah. side. Of, yeah. Okay. But that part there, nothing was going to change. The only thing we're going to change is the two apartments three and four. We're going to combine those two. Mm -hmm. Those apartments three and four, I think they're about 780 square feet each. And I think your minimal now is 800 square feet. So we're combining the two apartments to make it one big apartment instead of two, two uh, one bedroom apartments. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, sorry, I'm looking at the bulk requirements. So this is an S75. Right, so minimal livable floor area per dwelling is eight hundred and fifty. Is that correct, Joe? Joe, <laughs> is it eight hundred or yeah, eight fifty? It's it's eight hundred square feet. So, so yeah. we're in, so then are we in S fifty? It's in is it no, uh, S seventy five. So, uh, I mean, maybe maybe what I'm looking at is outdated. Um, so online zoning 270 attachment six table b2 bulk requirements single family and two family districts s75 says 850 square feet for minimal livable floor area whatever whatever it shows on whatever it shows on that chart if it says 850 it's 850 yeah. okay all right well we exceed that and once we once we combine those units we're going to more, more than exceed that because right now those two apartments are 771 and 644 so combining them will be uh more than adequate right and i know the, the change from the change to four i don't know what we were really coming from originally but um is was based on the zoning resolution so i don't I, we don't we're not revisiting that in this group um Okay, I, I just want to make sure. So I think I feel like we've given feedback to the applicant. Do you guys feel like you have what you need from us at this point to make your so. changes and come back to us? Yes. Okay. Um, Linda, Tony, Valerie, anything that we haven't touched on that we need to? And just look at their memos. Yeah. Right. I've gone over both memos and I don't see anything that concerns me. So. Okay. Um, then with that, can I have a motion from the board to adjourn the application? Eric Sala to make the motion to adjourn the application. I'll be back for a second motion. Any objections? No objections. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll All see right. you next month. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, that was the last new business item. So we are now moving on to part three of the agenda. Continuing business. All right. So the first um, application up now is Planning Board 14 2023 and BAR 17 2023. This is 171 Camp uh, Croton Avenue. Um, so we'll bring the applicant back if the applicant is here. I think online. Pat, I'm bringing you over if you wouldn't mind unmuting and turning on your camera, please. And then maybe while the applicant is coming in, I know Valerie, if you just want to give us an update and kind of where we've just been very, very high level, and I know we can kind of go into some of the details as the applicant's in. Um, yeah, so, I mean, basically right now, uh, the, the applicant had to, um, there's, I'm going to say it's almost still in the initial review. There was a lot of uh, issues or concerns that were raised with prior memos and the applicant was beginning to address them. Um, so I think, you know, I think once the applicant presents the changes, um, you know, Tony and I can talk about 
our comments. Um, there's just a couple of things in terms of procedure. We still need a short environmental assessment form um, submitted by the applicant, and this is ultimately going to need a, a referral to the West County, and so I'll be sending that over once I get the EA up for it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Hello? Right. Yep, we can hear you. And if you don't mind turning on your camera as well. Uh, camera, camera, camera. Start, start video. Okay. How you doing, guys? Very good. Thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, we made some revisions according to uh, some of the comments that were presented to us before about the grade sloping and and uh, and the parking and such. Um, we also did a deep hole test in the middle of the prop of the uh, parking area and hit water um, down a few feet. So. Um, the cultex that we proposed in the previous, uh, there's no possible way that they would work there. So uh, we propose to have the trench catch the water and then pipe it to that catch basin that's in the back of uh, the back corner of the property, uh, about 10 feet off the line um, there. Um, I believe it was suggested to us, but I don't remember by who. Um, the elevations changed a little bit, and uh, we'd lowered the grade in the parking area to meet the uh, the slope requirements for a handicap and the 5% uh, slope requirement for the parking area. Um, and we went to uh, um, garbage containers and not a dumpster. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and the and the inside the inside parking the inside parking area uh, was lowered as well. Uh, I believe it's one foot ten, almost two feet, um, from the original grade from the outside. Uh, and inside would be a we'd have a, there's a ramp um, for secondary access and secondary egress out the back. The main access and egress is through the through the side street. To get into the apartment. Okay. Um, I, actually, and maybe on that point, maybe Tony, you, you do you want to? Might be a good place for you to take off with your comments. Yes, yeah, so I clarify one of our um, one of our comments. Uh, it was a little confusing because it still said existing by the garage, and I looked at it, and yeah, it looked like you had dropped the the floor a couple feet to make those uh, parking spaces comply. Mm -hmm. uh, we still do have the concern with those two spaces being blocked in. I, I, I don't know how that's going to be handled. It, if you have, you know, a tenant that's parking there and needs to get their car out of the garage, you have the other ten, tenants out with their friends, they're stuck in there. So I don't know if there's an opportunity for labeled spaces or how that could be even handled. Um, the other thing I just want to make a note of was the stormwater. We had looked at this a little closer and realized that you are decreasing impervious surface. Yep. And noted that you know the, the the treatment will not be required, but I do want to see some calculations on the pipe sizes because six inches seems a little a little small to us. Considering you have a trench drain there, it could get clogged really easy. I don't know if you want to up, upgrade it or you want to show some calculations that those six inch pipes can handle it. Yeah, so, so uh, I I I made all the revisions uh, yesterday and today on the plan and tried submitting it this, uh, around noon today, but uh, I didn't know that Jamie was not in. And uh, hopefully to try to get it to you guys, but uh, yeah, they're in. It's just a matter of uh, seeing them. So those things are all, all, all the comments that you uh, asked for are, are submitted. Okay. Um, so one other issue I want to note. Um, I know you're trying to avoid the variance by putting pavers into the ADA loading spaces, but I believe that still is going to require variance being less than two feet off the property line with your uh, parking there. Okay. So that's not going to solve that doing the pavers because it's still okay. considered part of the parking because it's an ADA loading space. Sure. And with your spaces, the big problem might be now that you have an ADA space, you might need to require another space for the other tenant because the ADA is taking space of that. Right. Oh, so the ADA space does not count as an as a as a required spot. No, because if you don't have anybody that requires that space, they're going to be out that space. Ah, oh, oh. You don't 
Yeah. Also, that that space is supposed to be closest to the entrance to the building, not as far away as it is. Yeah, but the main entrance to the building is in the front of the building. Right, but you have to have that parking space is close to an entrance that they can get into. So if you're making, I don't know if you have an entrance in the back somewhere, but the person who's in a wheelchair is, how would they get from that space into the building? No, I can't, we can't, I can't, because of the water problem, I can't lower the grade in the back anymore in order to get it ADA compliant. So that's why the space moved back over to the other side. And you know, access to the to the ramp is only a few more feet in distance travel from the space where it is now to the back of the building. There, there's also the issue with the tandem parking, as as Tony mentioned before. Yeah. That yeah. would be the variance. Yeah. So so you're 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 saying that 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 definitely needs a variance. Yeah, the, the distance yes. is probably aligned with the with the parking. No, but also, also the tandem. Yeah. yeah. So so oh, yeah, exactly. The ones in the garage and the ones up. Yeah. Right. So as Sony was was noting before, right? So if you're if, if that were to be allowable, and I think we have to understand the the handicap parking spot implications, but those you know the garage spot and the spot in front of it would have to be designated to the same unit um, on both sides. I don't know, you know, um, that doesn't solve the other problem regarding. The either either the location or the the kind of the loss of a spot from the from the handicap space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that, I, yeah, I think that's a major kind of question that needs to be understood. Okay. Okay. Um, in in terms of a, the the change in trash storage, um, you know, I, I I think this came up in in Valerie's memo. Yeah. 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 One clarification, though, with it's not necessarily a variance. I mean, because of the fact that um, this does fall under the payment in lieu of parking, so we'd have to take a look at. So ultimately, okay. on whatever the board decides in terms of the final site plan, we'll have to take a look at it in terms of what variances would need to be granted or not granted with zoning. So, but that is that relevant to the tandem parking as it's well? Relevant to the NC two in terms of so you would they would potentially they have to provide the parking, but if they can't provide the parking, they can't get variances for parking. They would have to pay and or petition the village board to pay. Got so it. Say, say that one more time. I'm sorry, I didn't get get so that last part. Then the NC two, mm -hmm. if you cannot provide the adequate parking according to the zoning, then you can petition to pay in lieu of parking. Uh, to the village board and the nc2 does fall within that criteria okay but valerie sorry because that just to be for my clarification i understand right now their their site plan shows six spots i think we're recognizing that one of those spots to, the, the tandem parking spaces don't count got it okay so that so that would have to be payment in lieu right. even for the tandem got it that, that was the so, so that section part in the code that's in the code doesn't comply. It's it, the section two, section two seventy thirty has all the parking and loading regulation, mm -hmm. and specifically two seven thirty a one is when it starts when it starts discussing the uh, specifically NC two district. Yeah, so so two thirty uh, two states that the areas computed as parking spaces. Areas which may be computed as open or or enclosed right. off-street parking spaces included any private garage, carport, or other area available. Uh, each space shall be independently accessible. I get that. That's what you were saying before. And then They're not accepted. independently accessible. So that's the question right there. Right. So, okay, so unless, I got you. Otherwise, tandem parking with access from only one direction shall be computed as one space. Right, right, right. I got you. Okay, I got you. Okay. All right. So, so that's the key word right there. Okay, I, understood. I, understood. The project, so it's mixed use. Hey, Brenda, sorry, just use your sorry. Using oh, sorry. Um, the project is mixed use. Mm -hmm. So, what is there parking designated for residential versus yes the office? Okay, but it's not. It, but no, that's a good question because it's not noted on the plan, right. and it needs to be. Right, we need to know noticed. which spaces right. are residential okay. parking. Yep. Yep. And and really, the only way the tandem works is if the tandem are residential parking, 
and the space in the garage and the space behind it go with the same unit. Right. Yep. Otherwise, the tandem parking, from a practical matter, doesn't even work. I think yeah, but we need more. We need we need two cars per apartment. So. But I think also in relation to the parking and how you have it is dealing with the trash because right now you have sort of the trash line with like four cans, but it's not really clear if that is going to accommodate all the trash for like the whole entire site. And then also that's right next to the parking spaces and also right in front of um, an access, so rear access, so the building. So it just seems like that the location of the parking could potentially become a nuisance to whoever's trying to get in and out of the the rear of the building as well as the parking. So that's that's actually the pathway where those trash cans, right? That's a pathway from the garage into right. the, yeah. 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 How do they get picked up and be brought out to the curb? There's a maintenance guy for the building that would be doing that. <laughs> And we've talked here about commercial pickup versus um, public. They they have said that they're doing public. And so, I think so. They would have to be brought curbside. They would have to be brought curb. For and, and just that trash storage that as proposed for all for I guess all four units, the two commercial and the two residential. Yes. And then I don't like because then you still have recycling and you know. So. Yeah. And bring the right. So, yeah. so I think the trash still needs to be worked out in terms of Okay, so you want so I, I don't quite understand the trash thing. Is there a is there a formula for volume of trash for for size of units or I, I don't I don't understand how I would figure that out. And then the trash the trash that you're showing is in the right outside the door, sort of in the walkway. So how do people walk to their cars? Well, there's plenty of room past it. It's a five foot section at the tip. So there's three feet of space, of clear space to get by the trash can at the end. I, I, I think that's, I think what we're trying to tell you is that that looks awkward, tight. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. Not sanitary. <laughs> I get it. And, and probably not big enough, even though there's not a calculation. It's but you have a, you know, a board of, of seven people who are looking at it and saying that that doesn't I look got, like. I got you. I, I totally understand. Uh, I'm right. sure there's calculations out there about. Yeah, but you also need not gar like Tony said, you need garbage and recycling. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I got you. Okay. And and probably some sort of, of of separation containment for that so that it's not so it don't overflow. I got you. Right. Or a raccoon comes in and knocks it over in the morning and yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I know if I was parking there, would my would my car being hit with the garbage can? Yeah, I I know what you mean. Yep. <laughs> um. All right. Can we look at the um uh, the plans the the from the building the elevations? Yes, yeah. the elevation. Yes, let's do that. Exciting. Um. So, if I understand correctly, you've increased the um, commercial space. Yes, it's it's it's. Uh, um, doubled in size to, uh, I forgot the area. I'm sorry. I forgot the, the square foot area off of the top it's of my head. 700 something now? Seven, 700 something, yeah. And so there are two separate, I, I was curious about the, the facade of the building is showing two entrances and I was wondering if they're both for the commercial spaces. Yeah, okay, now yes. I can. Yes, okay. yeah. So not the apartments are actually accessed from Sherman Place. Correct. So there's a that's actually a good question. So there's a door on Sherman, but there's also because we were just looking at the garage entrance. Can we just kind of go to the back? Yeah. Um. So maybe yeah, keep on going back because yeah. All right. So there's that door which was when we were looking at the site plan was where we were uh, kind of concerned about the trash location. Mm -hmm. Now that's a new ramp because you're lowering the grade mm -hmm. garage up to the to a vestibule, which is also accessible from Sherman. Correct. Can I ask a question? You uh, increase the area. Did you do that by uh, extending the facade out further? No, no, not at all. Not at all. The building size has been the building size. The, the, the dimensions haven't changed at all. 
No, but from, the from what we first proposed, yeah, we so did adjust the uh, the corner to get access to the electric on the on the building next next to us in the front facade. You can see that there's a three by three little notch notch out there to allow access to that to the to the service that comes in from the 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 pole. Mm -hmm. So the, your facade is still not in line with your neighbor's facade. Not quite. No, it's it's back. Uh, if you look at the neighbor's facade, they have like a return of, I believe it's brick that goes down vertically. We we allowed the visual uh, appearance of that brick to show, and we're back from that brick that uh, set back from that brick. So when you look at it from the side. You could still see that brick defining the corner of that that building facade. We go to those elevations, Maddie. So the footprint is not changing. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's it. So you have a little. So that's that that blank panel. So it allows your cornice to to actually um, the profile of the cornice to extend on the end where normally it might be flat at a lot line, and that returns just a blank brick. Correct. Correct. Well, in this elevation, and I, I actually didn't read the elevation correctly. I was trying to understand what that was, and but that's re that's a recess. That's correct. Um, got it. I, I think it would. I think you know. I mean, I'll, I'll let other board members comment. I think that this is looks a lot nicer than what was originally proposed to us, um, and uh, and I, I think it would be helpful at this point um, to see this you know, kind of rendered in sight, right? So we can kind of understand what this looks like along Croton Avenue, probably, you know, the, you know, looking, you know, both east and west along Croton, um, as well as the Sherman ele uh, elevation, just so we can kind of see this in context um, and kind of see some of those more three-dimensional components of this that are, I think, harder to read right now. I, it, like I said, I, I do think this is a significant improvement over what we've seen in the past. I do have a question going back to the commercial spaces. The... Um... If you're facing the building, there's a warehouse space behind this smaller commercial space. Is that correct? It's storage for the apartments. What's the space? Um, so all of that where it says, I don't have my glasses on, it looks like it's like 280 square feet or something. That's all office. Back Four, the that's 400. The one on the right is 426.14, 426 and change square feet. And the one on the left is 288 and change square okay, feet. Okay, it just looks like there's a demarcation. What does that dotted line represent? So the dotted line is the old building facade. Oh. Well, wait. So the footprint is changed. Then the footprint is changed. The footprint of the building is definitely changing. So, so right now, in the, like, the, between the building and the sidewalk, there's like a, a, a parking area, right? Right, right. Um, so building they're, building. they're building out to the sidewalk. Yeah. Okay. No, so, not quite to the sidewalk. Just to just to the corner of the the building that was that's that's next to us. Oh, so it's you not, are, it doesn't go that far. It's only it's only twelve feet. That, going to that was my that was still, right. No yeah. question. And I, I just wanted, with respect to the storage, how is that accessed by what? I, it's it's for it, the storage is for the apartment. Through the apartment. Yeah, there's a there. door in the in the lobby there yeah. oh, so because i thought your original proposal was to have some warehouse storage space yeah for but that did, did, it us. didn't function properly so okay. you know we, we realized that the apartments need you know when you rent an apartment people always have extra stuff so right. like bicycles and things like that oh okay you know? so this, this is for the tenants use not for the business of the owner. Of yeah, the yeah. I mean, the owner could use it too, I guess. But yeah, for the tenants, mostly, yes. I have, what's the utility space? Utility is where the boiler and all of that stuff and the HVAC and all of those things are going to go. So is that existing? No, that's new. It seems very awkward to get to. If you yeah, have so to it's, it's through, through the storage, storage space. space. Yeah, it's through that's the storage utility. space. Yeah, yeah. Don't you have to have an outdoor outside entrance to a boiler room? No, not necessarily. But Joe, is there is there any code, code prohibition as far as access to, to a, a utility room through a storage room? That'd be my one concern. I, I would say that that is going to be a, somewhat of a concern because if they have to get to the utility room, like for a, a case of a fire in the fire service, I don't think you'd want to go through block storage. 
All right, no, that's no problem. I could get the we can put access from the lobby. Um, and that also just kind of speaks to some of the VAR issues as far as you know heating and cooling. Is this going to be? Is there going to be a, a boiler with a with a vent or a flue on the roof? Is there going to be you know heat pumps located on the roof or elsewhere? How is what's what's the plan for that? And you know, it may not be something you can answer right now, but as you develop the exterior um, elevations, just kind of those components into that plan. Yeah, yeah. So that's you know it's in debate. So we've been arguing over that, which is which is best as far as cost wise for the tenants. Do you need, you need to see if there's going to be exterior equipment? Exterior equipment, exactly. Yeah. So you know, there's nothing going to hang off the building facade, um, but yeah, there might be something on the roof. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> okay. Um, other board questions here. Um, okay, can I have a, a motion to open the public hearing? Bill Moreira, motion to open the public hearing. Michael Aronson, second. And any objections, objections, motion carries. Is there anybody here to speak to this application? I do not see anybody. Is there anybody on Zoom? You can use the hand raise function if you would like to speak to this application. And I do not see anybody. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn the public hearing? I'm um, going to make a motion to adjourn the public hearing. And any objections? No objections. That motion carries. Um, so I think um, I think that you, know, you should have your margin burdens at this point. Um, I guess I'll just again, as I always do, Linda, Valerie, Tony. Any last comments or questions? To anything we didn't cover? No. Just the, yeah. I mean, I think our biggest issue was the parking. We yeah. to work yeah. better. Yeah. And I, we, I think you laid that out pretty clearly, which is which yeah. is. So we'll see where that goes. Mm -hmm. uh, members, any last minute questions? Okay. Um, thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Can, can I have an emotion, uh, a motion to adjourn the uh, application? Michael Aronson, motion to adjourn the application. All right, so I'll be second. Any objections? No objections. The motion carries. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. All right, um, moving right along, we are up to, um, all right, this is Planning Board 11, this is item B on the agenda, Planning Board 11, 2023, and BAR 9, 2023, this is 142 to 144 South Highland, um, and this is the Popeyes application, so we have in here, and I think maybe, um, well, I, I have two yeah. consultants. Okay. Um, okay. Are they, are they, yeah, they're, they're online. online. All right. So we can bring your consultants Star in. Star Kip and uh, Anthony's thinking out. Right. If it's good to bring them in at the top. As you come in, just uh, please turn your camera on and you will be able to speak um, kind of as we, as we get to your comments. Um, so, hey, Valerie, can you just give us kind of our, our update on her end? And I don't know, if, Tony, if you want to, chime in as, as well and then we'll kind of you know turn it over i mean just yeah. basically right now i think we're down to the issue of the traffic circulation right. and i think tony can you coordinate with our, the latest traffic Good, correct they gave us another layout which shows the the um bypass lane there are going to be some issues um colleagues did adjust it and show how it could work but you know variances will be required it, the big thing is DOT. I mean, DOT is going to drive this. Um, but, you know, in, in terms of, you know, that 6%, you got to be 6% between 25 feet. And then you could go up to 10%. I mean, there's ways it could be adjusted, make it work, maybe not, you know. It, and I, it all kind of comes down to you're not going to have as many queuing. You're not going to have as many spaces to make that bypass lane work. But it can work. But, you, you know, again, you're taking one space away from what already is, you know, not much bargain. You're taking away, I think, what is it, two, two queuing spaces? You wanted 11, this takes it down to eight. eight. Collier said that was um, Collier's biggest concern yeah. was the loss of queuing. The loss of queuing from eight to 11. Um, and then this would be by adding the high bypass lane. And this was Collier's looking at one of the um, studies that was presented at our last meeting and kind of redlining it and and kind of putting a hypothetical plan together um, to see what the what the, the kind of the cost. Maybe it would be helpful. I think that's on the agenda, right? That that plan. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Collier's basically said it can work, but you lose queuing. Right. Um, and I think. 
in terms of probably, probably getting into this. When you, when you said DOT, right, you're talking about the, the circulation? Correct. And um, they're going to have a big say in that, I believe, in the circulation. If they see it's going to be a, it's going to be an issue, they think cars are going to be backing out, it's, you know, it's going to hold it. I, do you have any... Um, uh, I have an engineer, but... Um, okay. 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 I didn't know if there was a timeline, if you, if you got in contact with the DOT, if they let you know how the review's going. It's lovely. <laughs> it's lovely. If, if I can introduce Hi. myself. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> let, 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 everybody. I can just stop you, sorry. Let, let me let the applicants <laughs> introduce themselves before you get too far. Yeah. Good evening. My name is Clifford Davis, counsel for the Popeyes application. Um, just to let everybody know, we came back from the Zoning Board of Appeals um, with regarding the signage. So we got the variance as to the principal facade. As to the secondary facade, we got that. There's just a correction in Valerie's memo on, I guess, 5B, where it talks about, um, Valerie said it's 40 square feet permitted. It was actually 35.875 square feet permitted, and, and we got the variance for the 74, 63 square feet. We made an application to put signage on a third facade that was turned down. And, and um, as of right now, we're, we're not coming back on that. So we're going to live with the two facades, and um, we sent you guys the elevations. Um, we provided the updates, as um, Mr. Chairman, you had said, stated regarding the alternative. Um, so it was apples to apples, so, you know, we met the survey. Um, we have given you information as to the customers coming to Popeyes. Um, we still have very little information from the New York State DOT. So we provided the finishings, you know, you know um, the elevations, the materials, um, the review. I think has been here; it's been pretty exhaustive. We've been here almost a year, and um, I'm hoping we could sort of wrap it up tonight. Subject to the DOT, um, our engineer uh, Anthony Stankinelli is here. We also have Star Kip, our traffic engineer. Um, Mr. Greeley has raised certain issues; those five issues. Um, we've submitted a memo that came in just a few days ago, just so the board knows exactly our position. Um, but I could have Mr. Stankinelli um, walk in through. But I think what we're looking for tonight is we're hoping we can get the site plan approval and the bar approval subject to whatever comments are from the DOT so we don't have to keep on coming back here every month. <laughs> Um, and Anthony, if you want to address those issues regarding um, the, the, the Greeley memo. Can you hear me? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, Anthony Stagnelli, Phrenesis Engineering for the applicant. Um, so basically, there was the five concept, five um, comments from Collier's. Um, the first one was about the slope, and that's the proximity of the corner of the building by the drive through exit to the street. Um, based on other comments that we had throughout the year process that we, we've been going through this with the design, um, actually from uh, one of your other consultants, was that we, we can't go over 5%. So it's another reason why our building is pushed back where it is. Um, so that we could achieve the proper proper slope from the drive through to the right of way. Uh, ten percent cars could be bottoming out. so we 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 don't agree with you know increasing this slope. Um, so that's number one. Number two, uh, the drive through queue would be reduced um, from eleven vehicles to eight that that's not acceptable. Um, they, there's going to be, you know, our studies show, the counts show, we need at least, at least 11, you know, we, we prefer more, but 11 was the max we could get with the, the site plan as it ex exists today. Uh, number three, uh, the parking will be reduced from eight to seven. We, we, we can't lose a stall. Eight is, you know, the bare minimum. And that's what code requires. We're not going to come back to the board for a variance. Um, and we need that additional stall. We, we don't want people leaving because there's not enough parking stalls and that, that one extra stall helps, helps, helps meet code. Um, number four, in, insufficient 11 foot lane provided near entrance area. 
that I give it to Colliers. Great job. They they angled the building on this initial concept and they got the 15 foot aisle. Um, but that doesn't solve all the other issues. Um, number five, the small radius here. Um, uh, so that's the radius at the at the corner at the drive through, the back left corner there. You see how the existing concept? Nope. Other sorry. Other well, yeah. There's two of them actually. The two radiuses they wanted to you know bump out so that it, it could better turn. And we agree. We need as big as big as a radius as possible. Um, Actually, the layout that we have now has larger radiuses and and can accommodate a pickup truck, a large size truck, in and out. This concept, a, a larger truck, a pickup truck, they're kind of running over into other lanes, over curbs. Um, and I think actually when we did the truck run, the larger truck or pickup could only go on the outside lane. They can't go on the inside lane. And I think one of the comments was, well, put a, put a sign saying trucks only this lane. Like we can't police that. So we respectfully request to, you know, this is the third time, you know, we're being questioned on our layout and the practices over the last year on our design. And, you know, it, it's enough is enough. I mean, it, we have a superior layout that has been proven and reviewed. We're at the finish line. I think we're done um, entertaining, trying to get, you know, this bypass lane. It, it, it reduces too much parking. It reduces the queue lane. It puts us in a 10% slope at the drive-through that, that cars will be bottoming out. Um, so I, I think we've exhausted exhausted this. Um, so we'd like to move on. And Stark, if you can address the and any communications with the DOT or what, what the timing is. Stark at the our traffic engine. Yeah, good evening. I was Kind of jumped the gun there, I guess, earlier. Uh, Star Kip with Great Manning Engineering. Um, what I was trying to, to say earlier, and I think that Cliff had mentioned, is that we have uh, been able to get in contact with the DOT regarding their review of the application. Um, we are working through the review process with them, and uh, they even admitted it themselves that this has been a slow going process. So, um, Thankfully, we have been in communication with them and you know we've made more progress certainly with them than we have since our last meeting. But we don't have any constructive feedback from them at this time. That's fair. Uh, you know, I think one of the, the comments that that we had heard from Colliers and 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 I think you know um, that could impact the, the site plan. And I mean I realize that you guys recognize that is just the is the and this is what we were getting at a moment ago when we prematurely called you out here, Stark. But um, the just the, the circulation of the site and having I think that the the current site plan, which maybe it's helpful to have the the, the actual site plan that we're reviewing that's before us tonight at this point. Um, but that the current site plan right has I guess two way um, entrance exit on one side and then it's a one way um, right. on the on the other side. So I think that that was one of the things that Colliers had pointed out as far as a, a potential concern with DOT. Um, so. Um, I think that's fair. I think just in terms of uh, framing kind of what's before us tonight, I think we've, we've, we've spent a lot of time on the site plan and this was the last item. Uh, updated site design plan. As it's being pulled up. Sit from the bottom. Sit from the bottom. <laughs> no, this is just- That's, that's, that's the design. elevations. I thought I uh, It says some design plan. No, but I, 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 while, while this is being pulled up, I, 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 what I'm hearing right now from kind of the back and forth and you know you know from from kind of tony's um comments or tony's representation of collier's comments really uh <laughs> to be fair uh you know and and uh you know the applicants uh rebuttal if you will um is that we have kind of a, a conflict between at least the way i'm looking at it you know the the ability to have a bypass lane which i think we all think including the applicant would be a great thing to be able to have if you could versus it looks like the biggest cost of, of that list of five that we just went through was the ability to queue up. Um, I think just kind of from my perspective, looking at the sense of planning board and how this is gonna impact kind of offsite, that queuing is really important. Um, you know, if you can only queue eight cars and you've got, you know, a bunch of people at rush hour trying to get into here, um, you know, that's gonna spill out onto, onto the roadway. Um, if there are issues with not having a bypass, 
I think that the impact of that is local. It's the it's the person who's in the line that they don't want to be in the line, and now they don't have a way out. Right? I think we've talked about that, um, which is I think more local. So I mean, if it's if it's, if it's A versus B, I, I mean, I I think that I think the queuing should be really important to us, and that's kind of that's my perspective on it. Great. Great. Uh, I, I agree, and I, I just have one comment. I, I think it's really about if you know. Uh, and alternatives to the to the design have been explored, and, and I think you guys have presented right. it well and and done and have done what we've asked you to do. Uh, I guess at this point, you know, I think that based on some of the sales data I saw recently that was submitted, um, I, I am thinking about the directions of the turns and the entrances and the exits because although. Uh, 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 Stark, Stark hit, uh, you know, yes. traffic study, uh, whether there were sufficient gaps for making those left turns out of there. I, I do want to think about, you know, what if you have someone on ProNav also trying to make that left turn into there, and you have someone leaving the Popeyes trying to make the left turn out? I do think it becomes, you know, a challenge. Just certainly looking at the at the sales revenue, and at, excuse me, the, the customer trips, customer trips, you know, not in breakfast lunch, dinner, evening time, you know, it, it is a concern for people commuting home, for people, for other businesses, um, for pedestrians, you know, and just in general, uh, you know, for the neighborhood. And I, I think you've represented, uh, you, you know, uh, your interest well. And I think as the board, we have to, you know, balance the interest of not just what so we're excited, to what we're entitled to, uh, but also what's going to be best for the rest of the neighborhood in terms of this use. But I do think that turning a left-hand turn out of the, uh, you know, the, the northbound entrance is going to create issues at this place based on the on the sales volume that you presented. If I could have my traffic engineer address that. Stock, if you can address that. I think that the using the sales data to uh, determine the trip generation of the site is not you know the correct avenue for estimating trip generation what we what we did was we we observed the actual trip generation of a site so that sales data is not going to tell you the number of cars entering a site in the peak hours right it's telling you how many cars entered throughout the day through the month on average at the three locations in uh, the metro area so um I understand wanting to use that information to kind of maybe determine entering trips, but really that data is that sales data is only really good for breaking apart um, the types of trips that are coming to the site. How many trips are drive through and how many trips are parking and walking in. That's what that data allows us to do. Does that kind of help? I mean, I think, uh, it, it does help, but I, I think that ultimately, you know, I, I understand you're doing traffic analysis, but this is enlightening. It may be anecdotal because we don't actually know what the sales will be at this site, but I think it is instructive to how many vehicles will be entering the site in any given or time parameters, too. I mean, do you had on average over the three months, it was 25,000 trips per month, so 8,000 a month, right? And for like 60% of the trips are until during rush hour. On peak hours, right? Lunch and dinner. Um, so why would you guys be opposed? So that's predominantly most of your customers going through that time. So more more traps are generated, right? More customers and more traffic. Customers are trapped. They drive there, they don't walk there. So having eight thousand customers per month coming through that location, that's eight thousand cars. That's eight thousand car counts, right? Right? It's customer. Car is a customer. So why would you guys be opposed to a right turn only? I don't see that would be a big burden on customers on a Popeyes. I don't think anyone would not go to a Popeyes who has a right turn only. I don't think that's a detriment to the business model at all. I think it's uh, it puts less burden on the community at large having the right turn only. Because it's going to create problems that we know the street, we live in the community, we drive by it every day. I, so you're we're asking or or trying to imagine a situation where it's lefts are prohibited. Northbound lefts are prohibited into the site. Am I am I hearing this correctly? 
out of out of her. Right turn when exit site. Right turn exit. Okay. Yeah, exit all. So what, what you're saying is if somebody is in the site, they can only go to the right. Yeah, they can, they can, they can only go south. Cross in the lane. Just right, this, right. This spot right Not crossing the double yellow. Well, both exits. Both exits. Right. I would do. Well, the right. entrance is two way. Right. So the entrance no, is two way. Would it be both of them? Like, it would have to be right. Right. The entrance is both ways. Yeah. So both exits have would have to be right turn only for both exits. Well, Otherwise, yeah. You know, I, would the DOT. I, yeah. I would also just refer to the gap analysis that we did that Collier's reviewed that shows that there are more than enough gaps during the peak hours of uh, the roadway and the site to accommodate the left turns and the right turns out of the site. Um, you know, that was based on data recently co uh, collected uh, and it was reviewed by, by Collier's. Uh, and just remember, there's also two lanes traveling north, so they're going to be turning left into the second northbound lane. It's not not a single lane. That 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 was also in the traffic analysis. I thought that was a good point in there. The colliers looked at the gap analysis, correct? Uh, yes, we discussed that. At the, I think we. I think I, I, mean, I don't want to speak. That was part of our conversation. Yeah. We we'll see. Really was here when that was. Done. And he spoke to that to that gap. He was this. Yes. I, I thought Eric. I heard your question slightly differently. It was just the. And I don't know if we spoke. We've spoken about that scenario, and maybe start. You could just comment on it, which is the at the at the two way at the you know at the at, I guess at the northern at the northern um, curb cut where you have a a customer turning left to enter the site and a customer turning left north to exit the site um, and just the, the safety implications of that. Well, I think it would operate like any two-way stop controlled intersection along uh, US Route 9 where the person in the driveway would have to stop and allow that person that's on the main line to turn left into the site to before they turn left onto Route 9. It would operate like any, I'm trying to think of an example of it, uh, it would operate just like any two-way intersection or you know, T intersection on Route Nine. Like the gas stations on that on that route. Yeah. Most of them. I think are they two-way? I just wanted to raise this. Yeah. No. No. I think it's important. And and who knows what DOT is going to say? Yeah. In, in my personal opinion, my private jobs, this is stuff they'll look at, and if they feel like it's going to be a problem, they're going to restrict it. Um, not 100 percent certain, but I'd be surprised. Part of the yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was supposed to. So, it, you know, if we were ready to move towards a resolution, we would need to. Yeah, you know, I, I know that it, it's it goes without. You know, DOT approval is required regardless, but it could also be a, a, an outright stated condition. Just, just right. We have a, from last month. There were three specific conditions that this board was contemplating. One was dealing with uh, New York State DOT approval. Um, police department would be uh, for traffic during the opening, right? And I think the board just needs to define what opening is, you know, opening day, month, you know, right. how long. Um, and then also traffic management plan that would also be submitted for the general and for the grand opening. And then we'll give an easement. Those, that type area. Oh, yeah. And then the easement. Well, there were no comments from. Hasn't been reviewed yet. Okay. Quicker yeah, than the DOT. <laughs> right. Every the comments are we could be done over them. Yeah, I have a few outstanding. I was waiting for all that. These are all things that. Yeah. And then, of course, okay. yeah, depending on what DOT does, they may have to come back to you. Right. My right. question is what, what's the worst the DOT could come back with? No right turn? I mean, uh, no left turn. Hard to say. Yeah, it, it's hard to say. They could say you're only getting one entrance in and out. They could say stuff like that. They can. They make the determinations with the curb cuts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So whether or not you can have two way at that northern. Correct. They're going to look at all that. They're going to look at exactly what we're discussing here. They might say, Jesus, we're going to restrict this to rights only mm -hmm. out of the site. And, and any change that the DOT 
or restriction they impose that's not already on the site plan, then then it would have to come back for for another round. Yeah, of that I mean, generally you don't like to give a site plan approval with, without hearing from DOT yet. But it's been a long, yeah. it's been a long time. <laughs> I, I guess the concern is they tell you, no, you're getting one entrance. Your whole chip plan's changing. You don't have to come back. back. Yeah, and that's right. the concern I think everybody has that you know, it might completely change the whole entire site plan. <clears throat> that's the risk. That's fair. Um, I mean, okay, so, so and then maybe now's a good opportunity just to take a step back. I know that you you have, um, are there any other minor comments? I mean, on your, they're, they're, they're kind of housekeeping. Yeah, I mean, I know that was, you know, we were dealing with the easements and the ownership of the pipe in the back. I spoke to the building inspector, uh, not the building inspector, the, the village engineer today. He he had one out there. They they scoped the pipes. He's working with them on that. So these are, you know, those we'll are minor, you the Yeah, and those are minor issues mm -hmm. that could be even if it's, uh, you know, things like that. Okay. Um, and, and Valerie, on, on, on your end. We do not have any remaining pipes. Um, okay, well, we don't. I think it's really kind of up to us as a board right now to see um, kind of how we feel about the, I mean, this, the, it's the traffic issue, it's the DOT. I think that there's, I think what's, again, I think what, what's a little bit uncomfortable about this is that there's, there's somewhat of a question because DOT could could totally throw a you know a wrench in this and, and change the plan. But based on what we have, you know, I think what what we have to decide is do we feel like this works um, as presented uh, with the understanding, you know, assuming DOT also agrees, right? So that I mean, um, so I, I don't know. What we can do. We're, yeah, we we still will have to open a public hearing, and and depending on how we feel right now, either adjourn or close that. Um, so is there, you know, we can do a quick round robin actually, I think on this one, just kind of to get a sense of where everybody kind of feels on this, if this is something that we can move forward with tonight or not. I'll start, I'm okay with it. My main concern is the right turn only and DOT is going to flush that a little more and we'll get them to do that. I think they've actually, I concur. You're probably shaking your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From now on. I know that feeling. Uh, okay, so can I, can I have a motion to open, uh, to reopen the public hearing on this application? Bobby Valker, make a motion to open the public hearing. Michael Aronson, second. Bobby Valker, second. Any objections? No objections are in a public hearing. Is there anybody in the room here to speak to this application tonight? Don't see anybody. Is there anybody on Zoom? I do see a hand coming up on Zoom. Um, so I see Brandon. Um, so we were, are going to promote you to speaker, Brandon, and you can uh, just turn on your camera. Uh, and when you come in, state your name and um, your place of residence, and you're welcome to share your thoughts on this application. Oh. Maybe he didn't really mean to raise his hand. There we, there we go. Hello, how are you? I apologize. I was having a little technical difficulties. Oh, good. Uh, can everybody hear me? I can hear you. So just uh, just state your name and uh, place of residence um, and the for the record. And then uh, I'm a new resident at 135 South Highland, and I'm part of the uh, Highlands Terrace co-op community. Uh, my unit's directly across the street from the proposed development. I have no issues with development in communities as long as they're appropriate and will not uh, degrade con existing conditions. Uh, having lived in my unit for a short time, it's already become apparent that the traffic on South Highland, it can be bad. I'm sure as well aware, we live here. Trying to cross the street at Acre is dangerous. One of my neighbors was already hit by a car um, and it takes a ridiculous amount of time to cross as a pedestrian. Uh, the planning board is supposed to take into consideration the public health, safety, and welfare. The current proposed site does not do this. Uh, in the traffic study, there is also a reflected uh, with a 30-second existing average delay proposed to the increased 38 seconds with the proposed project. The applicant does not seem to be proposing any actual mitigations for this increase. Uh, there will be an increase in traffic, and there are just supposed to, I'm just supposed to deal with that. I mean, I don't really understand how that's uh, fair. Uh, the traffic will also 
uh, be due likely to the drive through, which is uh, mostly 60 percent of their customers are said to use the drive through. Uh, the increase during peak commuter traffic coming home will be ridiculous. The drive through itself is also excessively dissimilar from the existing uses. Uh, there are no other drive throughs here. In addition to uh, building directly adjacent to a property that was used as a KFC, which closed in 2017, and this this changed into a, a non-chain restaurant, the Tabasco Mexican Grill. Pat, it's actually delicious. Uh, the chain <laughs> restaurant was obviously not favorable to this area, and I don't really see how this Popeyes would be any different. Uh, I asked the board to consider this pro if this project is really appropriate for the location. Uh, do you, as a member of the community, want to be stuck in traffic behind a lot of cars from this project? Because I, I don't. I park on Acker every day, and no matter what time of the day, whether it's four in the morning when I leave for work, or seven o'clock at night when I come home, or four in, four in the clock when I'm going to the gym. I, I can't cross the street for five minutes during peak hour, maybe 10. And the other times there's always cars going by. Uh, so thank you for listening. I appreciate your time. And I hope this uh, this helped. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate your comments. Brandon, would you mind sharing your last name? I think I missed it. Oh, but Tony. Tony? But Tony, B-O-T-T-O-N-I. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. And, and I know a lot of that, just for the record, I think that the, that comment uh, was consistent with a lot of, of the comments that we had heard from the, from the public and, and, and the neighbors, um, you know, especially at the beginning of this application. Um, and I know we spent a lot of time working with not just the applicants, traffic engineers, but Collier's engineering, who was retained by the village specifically, uh, to to review the traffic implications and advise us as a board in terms of developing the project to make sure that it's uh, you know in a in a place and that that we're comfortable with. I think we're also looking at the fact that there's a potential um, that there's still a further review by the New York State Department of Transportation, which is still pending um, and could you know could very well impact the kind of final form of um, this project. Um, so can I have a, a motion from the board to, to close the public hearing? Michael Aronson, motion to close the public hearing. Again, a second. Any objections? No, okay, no objections, the motion carries. Um, okay, so I, I think we've, you know, done a you know very lengthy vending of this project. I think we just discussed it. We did a round robin. We put all the issues on the table. Um, I think at this point, um, I'll just kind of, again, just go back between, you know, Linda, Valerie, Tony, are there any questions or issues that we've not brought up, conditions, um, anything that's still pending on our end? There's, there is one thing I just want to concern. I was just looking at my memo. On the northern driveway, we are two feet away from the property line, right? But the, we got the variance. They got the variance. Oh, you got the variance. That's right. Sorry. Stand corrected. That's it for me. That. <laughs> so that's why we ask a million times, just in case. Okay. Um, okay. So, and, and no other comments. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion? All right. So, so we, I think a moment ago, listed out several conditions, um, including DOT approval. We talked about um, police traffic control, and that would kind of be there. There was a, a question of, of duration of police um, assistance in maintaining traffic on that site after opening. Um, I mean, we don't have colliers here, Tony. I don't know if there's any advice or or, or standard of care um, that we would want to apply to that. Yeah, I think colleagues' final note was all oh, features on DOT on their memo, so. Okay. Uh, and the village police department and whatever they wanted. Okay. It was that it was so long as it's enough, you know, it's for a year. <laughs> right. Yeah. Opening and a hard opening or just Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. One of the board members had asked, is there a soft opening? Is there a hard opening? Like um is that just the last thing? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Um. To be honest, I'm not. I'm not sure. I think it's just one grand opening. You know, there's no. I don't think there's any test runs like that. Um, they're more than happy, and and a lot of other openings. They you know will hire police. They will contact the police department to you know 
traffic safety and as long as it 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 takes um i just want to note there you know when popeyes were were newer years ago um you know the grand openings were a big thing a lot of people showed up uh, now that this popeyes kind of all over the place it's not as as such a hype um so not really that concerned but they're more than willing to, you know, have traffic mitigation and police there as, as long as it needs for the, for the opening, for the, if it takes a week, two weeks, um, I'll, I'll be honest, I'll, I'll be shocked if they need it for more than just the first, first day. Um, it's a lot of village employees who are very excited. Yeah, I was going to mention like the first week, a couple weeks. I yeah. decided at the last meeting. I don't remember the number, but I, I would say a minimum of like, maybe uh, like, maybe say minimes. minimum of like two weeks, and then plus whatever. But coordinate with the police. Okay, okay. we have no problem with that. Okay. That, you're going to be part of it. Will be a submission of a traffic management plan, so you can move on the traffic management plan. Well, um, we're in with the opening. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So these, these are two very related with the police department. Not a problem. It's a minimum of two weeks. Uh, Coordinating with the police department. Right. All right. Um, okay. Um, the traffic submission and acceptance of a traffic management plan. Who's who's vet, who's the vetting agency of the management plan? Is that the police or Colliers? Yeah, we can have, uh, we'll have them submit it, we'll have Collier's review it, and then the police can, after Collier's reviews it. Okay, um, we talked about the easement, so that's uh, the easement between, for the village to have access to the site for this pass-through drainage pipe. Um, I think it was more ownership, yeah. they're going to take ownership of the pipe. Well, no, we're, we're going to... Be responsible for it. Yeah, you still own it. Yeah, okay. Right. But we're going to be responsible for maintaining. Yeah. So it's an agreement. It's a maintenance agreement. So okay. So I, I, I provided a draft. Let it just mark it up. Yeah. Yeah. Just say to the satisfaction of the of the village's special plan use council. Yes. Um. Okay. And so other than those, are there any other any other conditions that we need to apply? Yes. Okay. No, I need BAR also. NBA. Oh, NBA. Yeah. So, and I think that it, just procedurally, I know that we've gone back and forth on this. Are we going to, can we just put the drawings up? Because I know that they were they were advised. We've all looked at them. The only change on these plans is the subtraction of signage right. on one of the exposures. All right. It, it, right. There's signs only in two facades. Right. So that facade at the top there, I know that, that was the rear. It never had a sign on the rear. Right. So on the drive-through side, there's no signs. It's only on the front and when people park. Yeah. Right. right. So that's the that's the drive-through side back there, the rear. And they got rid of that chicken art and put nicer green shutters. Uh, the board. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite one part. <laughs> I like to see. There's, there's still some chicken. There's still some chicken out there. There's there's still a chicken. That's there. the front. That's there's front. still a chicken. Goodness, that's that's the good. side without. Right. That's where it was removed the from the drive through. Right. There's no sign. That's, that's the rear, and right. that's the other that's side. The, okay. That's the side facing the parking spots. My goodness. I wouldn't know there was chicken. There. Um. Without okay. the check in? Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so we've looked at that. Um, okay. Um, and just sorry, I think I was going to say a moment ago, so we should do separate votes for site plan. It's, it's, it's just the two, right? We just have the just site plan and the BAR. BAR. Okay. Um, so let's start. Let's start with BAR. I guess um, can I have a motion to approve the BAR application? Bobby Bowker will make a motion to approve BAR. Michelle Dickinson second. And a roll call. Okay. Michael Aronson. Aye. Robert Bowker. Aye. Aaron Talbot. Aye. Phil Maria. Aye. Angelica Kanganis. Aye. Brenda Burbank. Aye. Joe. Aye. Very good. And now the next motion that we would be looking for would be for approval of the site plan. Um, and we just walked through the Subject to all the conditions that were just discussed. Correct. Valerie, you got them all, right? Eric Talbot, I'll make a motion to approve the site plan with all the conditions as discussed. Bobby Dowder, I second that motion. And another rule. Aye. Robert Bowker. Aye. Eric Talbot. Aye. Brenna Burbank. Aye. Angelica Kinganis. Aye. Will Maria. 
Very good. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you very much. much. See you. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, sir. Yes. Thanks, gentlemen. All right. Um, we are moving on to uh, item C of uh, this, uh, continuing business. This is 19 Campus Road. Um, and so this is Planning Board 06 2023. And um, this is a the conditional use permit for proposed construction of residential units on an existing building. I guess it's been a little while since we've seen this one, um, Valerie. So this, this yeah. application, or this, the applicant did receive their variance with the PBA. Yeah. It did not submit any new plans to address any of the comments that are still outstanding. So uh, all those comments are still out again, especially uh, some of the comments that the board raised last time dealing with the rear of the building. And Okay, so can we kind of see what's, you know, what's, has anything developed? I, you know, we're not real. Uh, I think the, the plans that were submitted to CBA are not even these plans, so we haven't made changes. So we just wanted to, again, report that we have the CBA approvals. Okay. I don't know if the, you know, we're still open for public comment, but um, we, had, we had to submit the new package. Okay. Even the drawing that you see now for planning is not the same that we're submitting. Okay. So we're so we need to expect some some of the changes yes. that are going to be reflective of the, yes. the ZBA mm -hmm. process that you've been working your way through. Right. Understood. I'm sorry, sir. Would you mind giving your name and affiliation sure. for the record, please? JB Hernandez, LG Architects for the Project. Thank you. Um, I think the AI that we have in the computer automatically enters. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, so um, that's fair. I, I think because you're on the agenda, I would like to have a motion to open the a public hearing, a real public hearing on this application. I heard Brenda. I learned some seconds. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, any objections? Objections? Um, the carries. Right, the punch drunk part of the game. Um, all right. Is there anybody here from the public speaking suffocation? Did you not see anybody? Is there anybody on Zoom? There's only one attendee. Um, you can use the hand raise function, and I do not see it be on Zoom. So, can I have a motion one at a time to uh, to enter on the uh, public hearing? I was happy to make the motion. It works very fast. We'll get it. I like to stop it. <laughs> It's got, it's got to be an easier way, but I heard Angelica, uh, Bill seconded. Uh, yeah, seriously. Um, Bill Jeopardy. Uh, any objections? No objections. The motion carries. So thank you for the update. Um, and I, I guess, yeah, we, we have, you're, you have our old feed time, yeah. so you know where you're going. And when do, you, when do we expect to see you back? Uh, we will submit for next meeting. Okay. Um, perfect. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn the application? Um, I, but I recommend, oh, you because know, yes. one of the, uh, just when you said you're going to resubmit, um, I recommend probably resubmitting in responses to all the comments, including yes. the one major thing that's still out there that easily yes, been. Yeah, and there was, I think the last time we were in front of you, there was an attorney who was taking care of that and was dealing with that. So, yeah. Well, I need yeah. to see something. It, it yeah. probably won't be, you know, it, instead of piecemealing it, it probably would be good to have everything submitted all at once. Okay. That was obviously very central to the site plan. Yeah, was to have um, that space on the neighbor's property. I know that the two neighbors were talking to each other, so okay. That was, uh, <laughs> um, okay, very good. Uh, we need a motion. We need a motion to adjourn the application. Yes. Sorry about that. Uh, you've been <laughs> No objections. Thank you, JB. We are we're, we're almost there. Uh, we now have uh, item G on our agenda for uh, continuing business. 
This is Planning Board 07 2022 and BAR 05 2022. This is for Snowden Avenue. Um, and uh, the, I think that the really the application for us, the issue tonight is, is dealing with a um, excavation and fill permit. Um, and I know this is this a, a Linda or a Valerie uh, update? Tony? Sorry, Jesus. I can barely see you there. I need to move you. You want to send that to Tony? We had a we had a we had a memo. Just uh, you know, we went to Geo Designs, the geotechnical engineer, and, and just uh, additional information on how the testing is going to be performed. Uh, you have the memo. Just ask the Yeah, yeah, and just I'm sorry for for the board. All you're yeah. considering tonight is the excavation um, and fill permit for them to go on site to do some testing of the film, film materials that were brought on site and some other things to look at the um, work that we may want them to do because of the work that they went and did on the site. Right. So um, there was a site walk back in October um, with village staff and consultants and the applicant. Um, and you've, there's been some memos back and forth that I, I think you may have seen, um, but it was determined that in order to do the work to do the investigative work, they need an excavation permit because it seems to be our thing. Like, Thank you put up, yeah, I mean, in terms of how that scope is defined, can we put that? Tony. Yeah, up on the, just even up on the on the screen, I'm just thinking in terms of the submission. I don't think it's on this agenda. Okay. 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 No, but at least I just mean the scope documents. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We're talking about excavation and fill. We should see what's being yeah, excavated, so it's, it's what's being filled. Yes, yeah, so there's just 10 test pits that are being dug. Um, the test in the soil. I know code sessions are uh, the consultants want to see the actual contents of the soil. So um, we're going to work with them. And if you're not aware, the, this board, I believe, refers it back to the building department to actually approve the, the excavation and fill permit. So we'll address whatever comments we need to before that permit issue, and we'll have the experts talk to the experts because I'm certainly not an expert in digging holes and testing soil. So correct. Yeah, the, the geotechnical engineer wants to yes. see this, uh, how how the process is going to how the sample is going to be taken, all that information, and, and it's uh, a few of the uh, stabilizations that we spoke about on the site. Um, and uh, yeah, they do show 10 holes. There may be more that are needed. Um, speaking to the geotechnical engineer, they might find stuff, they might need more information. So it might not just be 10, it might be you know, maybe two more. Mm -hmm. And Tony, you or someone from your office will be on site when they're doing the, the work. The, 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 the geotechnical engineer will be out there the full time, we'll be out there full time. Okay. So. Is there, sorry, I'm just looking at that fine. Almost like, is there an 11th pit, that red circle that's off the lot line? So, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's in the drive. It's, yeah, because uh, I don't. Yeah, I do believe that was filled too. Yeah, that's where they put the um, construction entrance that's in. Right by the gate. Yeah. yeah. So we'll need to look at that material. Yeah. Okay. Um, but other than that, we're waiting for just kind of response to the to the initial memo and and understand. Yeah, there's a number of things we have to address once we you know take this. This is one of the first steps to get this project done. Up and running, you know, there's a lot of things we need to address, but this is first and foremost. We want to get out there, test the soil, um, implement the erosion control measures, and then get the project going back again. Okay. Um, is there anything else that we as a board need to kind of discuss on this as far as yeah. where they come back? I think once once all the testing is done and you get a better sense of what's going on, they're going to have to resubmit all the documents that they had prior because everything is good. Yes. Right. You're having a new topo done for the site, new wetland delineation. So then we would pick back up and revisit the the CEQA process well, at that basically point. Basically, we're almost starting, starting from scratch. Yeah, starting. Okay. Um, Understood. Just if I might, I know that the last time we did an excavation fill, we had a list of pieces of equipment, duration. Um, we talked about a bond. So is is that a conversation for now or? So I, you gave yeah, us the equipment, equipment, gave us the equipment yeah. and I think you also said it would be one day. Yeah. This isn't an option. Assuming it's the 11 test pits that we're proposing. If, I mean, if they ask for more, I might, might extend it, but the proposing just one day. And then everything will be removed from site and send Yeah, in relation to an estimation, you know, for, for a bond for restoration, I don't know if you can give us a cost estimate. Perhaps we can review 
of the, the restoration requirements. This is, you know, again, you dig the holes, you yeah. you right. yeah. hey, hey, so my back. Yeah. This is just crossing the T's. Cross. Yeah. That's that's all. Yeah. So are we requiring a bond? Yeah. Yeah. So we need to get your cost estimate from yeah. Just give us a call. We'll take a look at it. You know, it, yeah, it's it's digging a hole. It's really it's, it's filling the back, right? It's filling the whole back in if it's dug and left there. Yeah. Is it just for, for labor or what's the cost estimate for? Yeah, range, labor, yeah. okay. Materials, you know, okay. in this case, the material will be there, but it'll be seeds, yeah. stabilization, stuff like that. Yeah. You give us some, we'll take a look. I'll make comments on it. Shouldn't be much. Well, I'll just put a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm afraid to ask, and I have a motion to uh, to open reopen the public hearing on this application. Yeah, public hearing on an excavation permit. Yeah. Technically, um, technically, there's not. I don't know the way to speak on one. We have several people here who have indicated they wish to speak okay. on this agenda. Uh, you, it's not a formal public hearing. No. Public no, comment. No, it's, I mean, it's I mean, right. I mean, I, I'm looking at this as being listed as the. You know, it's, it's the planning board and BAR application number. It's not a separate application, right? This no, is a separate. It is. Well, it, it, we okay. had, in the agenda we rolled it up under this because it's all associated with the same application because it is possibly associated with this, but okay. it's technically a separate application. So it would just be a public hearing on the excavation. On the excavation and fill. Um, understood. Um, no, it was. It was not. Yeah. It was not, um, it, well, no, 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 I think, I don't know if Jamie sent, if Jamie probably sent the neighbor notices out, right? Did you, the neighbor notice? The signs, we know we still, yeah, but we've been updating the signs, we want just to keep that. Right, so, what happened with the board? The board is welcome to take public time, but, right, Yeah, no, and, and, and. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of up to the board in general. I, I think it would be helpful but I, it, I'm okay opening up to public comment, but I would just specify that if anybody wants to speak to this application, they'd be speaking to the 11 test pits. Um, and and we will have ample opportunity. Um, this board will have ample opportunity and the public will have ample, ample opportunity to speak to the actual application when it comes back before us. Um, so I think with that very, and in, in, in if, you know, with that, you know, very strict limitation. I will open it up. If anybody starts speaking about the general project, I will stop you um, and, and limit it simply to the excavation portion, uh, the excavation and fill portion of this. So with that in mind, I have a motion to open a public hearing. Michael Aronson, motion to open a public hearing on the excavation and fill permit. Any objections? No objections. The motion carries. Um, so very specifically, if there's anybody from the public who wants to speak to the excavation and fill permit that's in front of us so that's the the digging of uh looks like 11 test pits um then you can come up you can um, i think there's a sign in so, so I, I have the sign in sheet on the sign in sheet i have steve diane and jim so if there's anyone else who wants to speak who i didn't just name i'll send the sign in sheet back but otherwise you should be all set Okay. Can I speak on the project in general, or do I have to specifically address the excavation? Just the excavation. That's all that we're looking at tonight. The, the, we, this project uh, will presumably come back to this board right, so as an actual project that, application. That would probably be the loudest part of it, and I think that what I have to say would be valid. I'll speak to the excavation. To the excavation? Correct. To the, to the, the, the and the application from so before us right now is the ex excavation. Is, is not the excavation for the project. This is, this is this is an excavation and fill permit for 10 test pits. Right. So there were all there was not work done on the site. I think my comments would be better. Yeah, there was that's work done on this. To, that's the disturbance to the property, to a natural property. I think my comments would be valid. So just to clarify, there was yeah. there was some disturbance done on the site that they and did not right, yeah. that they did not have permission to do. Okay. Sure. So this is part of the village's process to look at remediating the work that was done without permission. We know there were trees taken down, the site was regraded, there was fill brought in. So what's being required of them now is that they do these test holes to analyze that fill that was brought in and also update the topography so that the village can see how much was changed on the site, 
how much fill was brought in and what that fill is. Is that a correct, correct. explanation, correct. Tony? <laughs> correct. And also to confirm that there's no contaminants brought right. in. Right. Uh, I waited here two and a half hours. It seems fair that my comments on this project should be should be heard. I right now I we want to hear your comments on the on the overall project, but we are not we're not discussing. You're not at the, that point yet. You feel we're, 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 we're not at all. In fact, that's we're not even. Yeah, you know, we're we're very our conversation tonight is very limited, just simply to that excavation, um, to this te these test pits, so that the village can better understand what's been done to site today, oh, so oh, we can yeah. better. So you yeah. know that the village is well aware. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, that, yeah. that yeah. explanation. Sure. If I can leave you a few documents. Hundred percent. Okay. Hundred percent. I'll leave one on each side. You can pass it around as you hear me. We can pass these around and then we'll leave these, uh, Maddie, with you so that these can be posted to the. Um, limited photography from this area, which I was going to discuss tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is a list of, of residents, current residences. Okay. So, would you mind giving your full name and, and residential address just for the, the folks taking the minutes, please? Yes, yes please. please. My name is Jim Capicella, 44 year resident of Austin. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Capicella. These are eagles that were born in Four Bucky Nature Preserve a few years ago. There may or may not be a nest in there now. I can't say for sure that there are, but these eagles were fledged in, in Snowden, Snowden Woods, specifically in the Four Bucky Nature Preserve. This is only one of the many highlights of, of that parcel of land. But I'll hold my comments because I understand what you're saying. Yeah. We're not up to that yet. We're, we're, we're not. And, but then is, is it okay if we leave these with the village to be posted online? For, yeah, absolutely. For copies of everything, obviously. Please. Thank you. So so my friends and I, I think we're going to comment then. We'll just hold that in abeyance then. Well, if there's comments on the excavation, right, not the necessarily the ultimate developments, but the existing conditions and what's taking, what the actual, like, the site work that's going to be taking place. I, I was told by a number of village officials, and when they cut trees down, these were dead trees that they needed to clean out to revive the on the site. That, that was a bunch of hogwash. Live trees were cut down. They made basically an entrance road into the property before any of your approvals. Right. I raised all kinds of hell about that, and rightfully so, because they should not have cut down all those trees without the approval. It sounds to me like you're trying to mitigate that in, those incorrect actions right now, right? That's, yeah. the, the, that, this is all part of yeah. correcting that. Yeah. I accept that explanation. Yeah. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be back. I, I can't speak for them if they still want to speak. Or you want to just, we just come back then at, at a later stage in this. I would just like to know. I'm sorry, can you just put your name on the top? Diane Deary, 23 you. Beach Road. We're here 45 years as well. My husband, yes. Mandy. Uh, our first house was on Snowden Avenue, so we know the area well. And now we're on Beach Road. So we did see a lot of activity. We walked the aqueduct every day. Um, I want to know, is there any repercussions for these violations that they did with all of this without permits? Do they get fined? Do they get... That's still all yet to be determined. We're trying to understand the extent of what was done. Okay. But that's what these test holes are for. How much material was brought in? Is it contaminated material? They're doing an updated tree survey so we can determine how many trees were taken down. Okay. Um, and an updated wetland delineation to determine if they filled any wetland areas. And all right. so we need all that information. You know, we are also considered wetlands where we are, and we're basically right behind them, okay? So, um, and I, I think you should also think about things like history, the sink sink, stone upon stone, the Austin Indians. That whole area could have lots of things there besides fill. You know, our, our home is 200 years old, and who knows what was there, you know? So I, I think we just, as a collective, have to be have to appreciate all that we have here in Austin, and and I I look to all of you to do that. So, I don't know. well, I have a question with the uh, was an environmental impact statement uh, checked or made. We had it hasn't gotten there, there yet. We're still at the very beginning of okay. them identifying or identifying 
potentially what are the uh, impacts on the site? The board hasn't even made a determination on them yet. Can a historic Indian date be done? Because it, the state has, a, uh, I, I believe it's a policy that before you can put anything up on the, on the property that the Indians once lived on, which is along the Hudson, the Simpson Indians, that there can be historic artifacts that can be found if there's a, you know, if they send somebody out. They're going to need a sign off from the State Historic Preservation Office. Okay. And, and they will determine if further study needs to be done okay. of the site on that topic. Okay. We had a um, few years back there, which state wanted to put in a bunch of housing back there, individual housing. And one of the, um, the, the subjects that came up was the Indians did live there, and there's a, a section that is, um, I guess they're clamshells, all on the top of the hillside, and you can see it from the railroad tracks. So that's where they used to have their clam digs, I guess, or whatever they had, their dinners. So they, they said they were going to have to make a look and check out what type of Indian artifacts could be found. So I'm just throwing this out there as a city, you know. So well, what's historical? It, so it's uh, it's the State Historic Preservation Office, commonly referred to as SHPO, okay. part of OPRHP, which is the Office of Parks, Recreation, right. Historic yeah. Preservation. So it's right. a state agency. Right. Okay. And they will need a sign off from them essentially to say right. there's nothing impacted or okay. requiring certain study studies. All right. I just want to make sure that, you know, that this is something that uh, can be checked out. Yeah. Understand. Maybe before you go, would you mind giving us your full name and resume? Uh, 23 Beach Road. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes. No problem. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have uh, uh, Steve Klozik. I have uh, worked on Stone Road for 37 years. Uh, I was usually going to talk about project in, in general, but uh, so that in 2017, there was a project essentially in the same area called Stone Road. And so I, I uh, presented it. Actually, the book was in charge of the uh, Secret project at that time, and uh, some of the uh, comments, objections that I had then uh, holds down. So I'd like to, this is the way that I summarize that uh, I sent to the uh, thank you to the uh, corporate council. And one thing I, I would have uh, presented at the beginning of the process. But in, in, in that case, in 2017, uh, the village uh, sent me a letter saying that they were going to have this meeting, you know, on the project, and and you know you could uh, submit, you know, come to the meeting. But I never heard about this project until uh, I I saw the bulldozers and heard the uh, the chainsaws cutting the trees. So. Uh, yeah, I was pretty upset about that, though, because it's been some of this stuff earlier. And uh, and secondly, uh, I, I would uh, suggest that, uh, you know, any uh, any entity that would uh, come in and cut trees, that they shouldn't be allowed to work and do uh, anything in the village of Ossipine. This is an example of, uh, similar to what happened to the brand of Pull Factory, uh, we lost, you know, again, historic thing with, with uh, you know, what the developer destroyed the building without uh, having permission. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, I, I uh, can I, uh, come, uh, come at you guys on having some stamina. <laughs> thank you.
Thank you much. Thank you. We'll add this letter into the record as well. Uh, I didn't sign in. That's fine. Uh, but I just wanted to ask a quick clarification with Kathy Deskamp's 29 Beach Road. Um, is this still um, Conservation Development District zoning, this area? CDD zoning? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. And the documents that are currently online, those are old and outdated and they're due new topography, new wetlands. So everything yeah. that was on posted with this agenda is no good. I wouldn't say it's all no good, but they're going to have to update. Okay. Yes. And and could I just ask, and I don't know if this is even possible, then in the future, because we did stay for three hours, if next time we can only ask questions about, like, how deep the holes were or what color the trees were, like something specific, can you put that on the agenda? So it, that we actually on the, it's specifically on the agenda that it, it's, we specifically added to the agenda that. I did say something about excavation, but it yeah. sounded to us like excavation to start building the building. It said this uh, planning board, is the, this applicant is appearing before the board in March for an excavation and build permit. So it's specifically just, we noted that it was just for that. Okay. I guess as a layman, I right. thought excavation was okay. We're clearing it and the, the beams are going up, so. Yeah, no, I, I understand why I, I understand why you thought that way. Yeah. All right, thank you. But ship doesn't hold the chains. Are there any other? <laughs> They've already been through. You can come up. That's okay. <laughs> thank you, board. Thanks for staying so late. Uh, I acknowledge all your hard work on this project. My name is Dr. Jane Cho. I live at 32 Beach Road. I just have a quick question for you all, which is, uh, what does the board, how how does the board uh, expect to um, prevent additional uh, unauthorized permanent damage or changes made to this property? Again, because clearly there's been no consideration before that last round of work that was done, cutting these trees, et cetera. Um, and so how how does the board uh, propose to prevent or monitor this possibility of activity? Uh, since this, especially clearly we haven't even thought of, or I guess you haven't even thought of, you know, whether the activity that has already occurred is even going to be um, fined or- This board that, is not uh, the enforcement agency. The board doesn't do the enforcement. Okay. Uh, so I think you understand my- my question. Yeah, right, right now, yeah, we do. And and and, and to be clear, and I was you know, we said this a moment ago, but the application, the while well, it's called excavation and fill here is part of an assessment um that that you know this board will be looking at which will inform the applicant as they move forward with their application here and inform our you know the village um the village consultants professionals in terms of what happened, assess what happened on the site already, which was obviously not permitted nor sanctioned by this board or anybody else. Um, and to determine, you know, what the environmental impacts of that work may have already been to inform how it, you know, what could happen in the future on the site. Is it not relevant to try to prevent additional work that would require yet another, you know, it's, it's always relevant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Uh, did you answer the question? I'm sorry if I missed it. I, you know, we can't monitor the site. 24, you know, seven, the, the village in, will enforce, the village is aware and the village will watch, but you know, you can't always prevent people from doing something illegal. It happens. If, if such activity were noted, what would you recommend? Call the building department. We have to legalize our neighbors, see what's happening. Of course. Report to what's happening. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> no, the enforcement. Yes. They they can enforce. Yeah. So yes, call the building department if you see anything happening out there that shouldn't be happening. Thank you. Yes. And if it's sure. after hours, call the police non emergency number. Right. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. For Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One quick thought to that. Um, very quickly. Very quick. <laughs> and the ramp across the street, and I'm yeah. really watching closely to make sure that it's really mitigation and not an expansion of what they've already done. Well, this work that's yeah. being done now, the village consultants will be on site with them. So they are going to be watched very carefully. What they can do is going to be very closely. Thank monitored. you for your work. Thank you. Yeah. 
Thank, thank, thank you, everybody. We, we are grateful that you're here and, and looking at this. Um, okay, can I have a motion to actually, let me just really quickly, is there anybody, we can use the hand raise function if you'd like to speak. And I don't see anybody there. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn the public hearing? You're, well, you're, are you closing? Uh, this is on the excavation and fill. Closing the, this is very specifically closing the um, public hearing on the excavation and fill permit. Right, so I wouldn't make motion to close the public hearing on the excavation. Thank you, Robert. I second that motion. No objections. No objections. That motion carries. So, but so we still need to see the 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 response back from the applicant or. Well, too, I mean, the other or, is the other issues. You could you could issue the excavation fill permit. You know, with conditions and everything has to be okay. in a bicolored session. Right. Yeah. And then that way they can get their testing done so you can get to the next step. I know the testing is imperative here. Yes. We want to get that done. Right. That's that's the protective measure really that we're looking for. Um that and yeah, and you just that makes sense to the board. I mean, did, yeah. we have that and we have that listed in your memo effectively okay. this. Um so it would be approve the excavation and fill permit subject to satisfaction of the Keller comments and the posting of a bond in an amount to be approved by Keller. Okay. Um, and as we know, I guess they, they, they've already started that response. So we know that that's, that's kind of in process and that was what was. Right. Okay. Um, makes sense. To, can we have a motion from the board to approve the excavation and fill permit? Uh, the uh, making a motion to those, with those, those uh, conditions. <laughs> 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 uh, and we will do a roll call. All right. Michael Aronson. Aye. Aye. Robert Balker. Aye. Eric Talbot. Aye. Brenda Burback. Aye. Phil Maria. <laughs> Angelica. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Chair Roy. Hi. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Um, I guess we should adjourn the application because there's still portions of it open. But um, so, can I have a motion to adjourn this application? All right, so I'm going to make a motion to adjourn the application. Any objections? No objections. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very Filed before it expires. It doesn't look to be the case. I think we have to submit for a reapproval of that. The surety company we're dealing with is giving us trouble because the resolution is in the prior owner's name and the new owner has a slightly different LLC number. So that'll probably come in either next month or the following month before the board. There's probably going to be some, and maybe some zoning amendments have been adopted by that. Oh, um, I got you. Yeah, I don't know where you are with yeah. that. We're yeah. trying to get to, to, to okay. eliminate That's the more limits on the number of extensions. Okay. Yeah, I think there's some some information from the prior owner, so we need to give you. But I just don't have any surprises if I'm thank you. here. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, it's 10 away, a motion to adjourn the meeting. Michael Aronson, motion to adjourn the meeting. Any objections? No. no objections. Thank you very much.